All right, welcome to the Tuesday show. My name is Ultra David. And I'm James Chen. How's everybody going? So we're going to be talking about these things. The E-League, the sonic boom in Madrid, rigging event over there on the CPT. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be chatting about some questions surrounding the NRS DLC stuff. Should they be allowed when they come mm -hmm. out? We'll see. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Uh, other events and game stuff, you know, community stuff, and then there's not a lot to talk about, it turns out. That. <laughs> so at the end, we'll have MISC, a.k.a. Questions. Maybe just open questions for people, depending on how much time yeah. we have. So, But I really want to get to one very, very important question to start off with. How long has it been since you've shaved? <laughs> oh, good question. Because it's getting, it's getting quite this is officially, the thickness here. It's officially my best mustache ever. Really? Yeah, I could never really grow a mustache until like recent times, but then, I don't know, look at this guy. I know. I was there it say, is. It's kind of impressive here. There so. it is, look at this guy. Yeah, uh, I don't know, it's on all the same growth time, so I'm happy that I have a mustache now, <laughs> that's cool, but I'm definitely going to shave it tomorrow. Oh, interesting. It will be gone tomorrow. Well, uh, oh, certain, why, you're going to shave it tomorrow? A certain somebody who uh, may not love the beard... <laughs> Maybe having a certain oh, no. anniversary of birth. Oh, uh, and for a gift, you may have to... That actually be genius if that was my only gift. <laughs> uh, I'm not that gutsy, but uh, I am indeed going to be shaving for, uh, for that day. Well, so. we should... I've enjoyed should, it. You should get at least some photos before you, you shave it. Like get, Just like take some selfies. It'll be back it. in a couple of weeks, man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, man. Not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, yeah. Let's talk about the E-League. Yes, so last week uh, we were only partway through the E-League when we talked about it. So we were only able to talk about Group A and Group B. Correct. So let's talk about Group C and Group D and uh, the you know weird thing that every pool had to have one guy who went 0-7. Yeah, I mean, just based on the... Well, it's obviously not necessary, but... Right, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But it was just really interesting that know. that happened. Yes, yeah. and the Davids... I mean, sorry, the Steves... <laughs> The Steves obviously had spent over a week in Atlanta. Those guys yeah. are pooped. And yeah. little do you guys know, like the last time Sejan was on our show two weeks ago, it took him over an hour and a half to drive Dude, here. this is not close to where he lives. Yeah, Seriously. and then after 11 o'clock, like when we finish the show, he has to drive back home, which is like 40 minutes. It sucks. That definitely sucks. <laughs> it sucks. And Steve, tasty has to Uber his way over here because he, he used to live closer to where Sejam was, but now he doesn't. So he has to Uber his way over they here, can't carpool anymore. Uber his way all the way back. And so it's just like, he's like, I just, yeah. It's uh, it's cool. I don't blame yeah, him. Yeah. Get a night off, you know, rest a little bit because they definitely have been traveling a lot and, mm -hmm. and doing, mm -hmm. I mean, there was a lot of work to be done at that E-League, dude. They were there for, yeah. they got there. Before our last show, the Thursday before, mm -hmm. they were already there, and they were like doing rehearsals and whatnot. And then it was all last week, and then it was the Friday night also, mm -hmm. and I think there was even something else after that. But like, yeah, they've been very busy. Uh, he was like at a HyperX thing with Hyper nothing to do. Yeah, he was at a HyperX thing, so... Dang. Yeah. Well, you know what? Good work to them. Good work to them. So... Let's talk about the groups. Yeah, yesterday or last week we talked only about A and B, right? And the and the results, of course, are on the actual E League site, right? Yeah, so they have a good site over there. there. Yeah. So. Guess what the website is? EleagueTV.com, right? Really? Ah, <laughs> no, it's ELeague.com. Is okay. it? Oh, I thought it was E-League TV. Oh, that's the that's the Twitch. Twitch is E-League TV. Yeah, yeah, that's silly to have TV at the end of your name. But you know mom. what the thing is. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> They're probably the same thing that happened with us that the other one was taken already. Uh, uh. You know, it's funny because YouTube has Ultra Chen taken, Twitter has Ultra Chen taken, and it's, I think it's the same guy. I mean, it would make sense. It would make sense. It would. But he had like, it's like there was some piano stuff that was on both sites, and I was oh. like, I'm pretty sure this is the same. And it's just some Chinese dude, I'm sure, with the last name of Chen that he just stole yeah. Ultra Chen. Well, from I mean, us. he, when we first started this thing five and a half years ago. Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's wild. Um, he had already taken the Twitter and had never used it. It had been like years since he used it mm. then. Oh, okay. That was okay. like 10 years ago. Uh huh, uh huh. Not literally, but obviously quite a while since he had used it, so uh, I don't know. Anyway. 
I wonder if like yeah, well, there's I definitely there's, a possibility. But, yeah, that there's we can ways get that it. you yeah. can like. Yes, we can definitely just, do like, that. Kick them to the curb. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely legally possible. So in um, Group C, start out with that one. Sure. This did not go how I expected. No. Rem okay, you remember? So Dan's not here anymore. Last week, I bet this Dan figure yeah. that it was going to be Cien and Fudo. Uh. I was like, I am so confident that it's Cien and Fudo. I said if I was wrong, I would give up this Dan figure. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think we What are you going to do with it? I, I don't know. I think he wants to stay. It's okay. You, you, you let him go, but you know what? He of his own volition, <laughs> of his own volition, he's here. He came back. Yeah. He, he, he's not going to let himself get kicked out. Dan loves me, so... Yeah, that's right, he doesn't have much in the way of family, All James. Right, fair enough, fair enough, okay, okay. Lord so joke. Okay. Uh, so, of course, eight people in each pool, two qualify automatically into the TV realm, uh, mm -hmm. realm and then four in the middle, and then two die. Right, exactly. Uh, two drown, so... So, who are the people in this pool? In this pool? Well, I want to just say... Sure, all right. Sure, okay, yeah, I'll try to like, randomize it in my own brain somehow. Well, I mean, because the thing... Because uh, well, we read. actually have the actual match results on the E-League site, yeah. right? Do, oh, do, yeah, oh, I got them here. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. okay got oh, them. the full results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, literally, like, one every fight that went there, who beat who, etc., etc. Yeah, fair right? enough. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I can tell you that in Group C was Tokido, Fudo, MOV, Filipino Champ, Sien, K-Brad, Wolf Crone, and Gutex. Right. And I, if I remember, both of us were kind of like Gutex and maybe MOV were out of there. I think you're right. And then we were like Fudo and uh, CN were going to make it. I'm pretty sure that's what we said. And you know what the worst thing about it was? See, I mean, obviously hindsight is twenty twenty, right? But I was just like, you know, I'm actually worried about Wolf Crone. Really? Like, oh, I, I wouldn't have said that. I honestly. was actually thinking that Wolf Crone might have surprised some people. but Yeah, I mean, certainly I thought he was going to qualify. But uh, anyway, what ended up happening was that Wolfcone won it. He mm -hmm. was six and one overall. Congrats to him. He looked super awesome. Um, he was really strong. He beat Fudo 2-0. He only lost to Sien, and that was 2-1. That's crazy. Yeah, you know I mean, like he just yeah. He and it was so and it good. took a crazy comeback at the end for Sien to win that. Like he he was almost dead. Well, like Wolfcone was basically one half a bar Ibuki comeback yeah, away man. from being seven and zero. Whew, Fudo 6 and 1 also, but of course he lost to Wolf Crown, so he's second place. Mm -hmm. So th that's who qualifies then. Right. The TV. Yep. So then third place was Sien. So Wolf Crown is going to be on TV. Yes. With all of his amazing interviewing skills. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Fantastic interviewing skills. Someone needs to. That guy needs to seriously get like some sort of interview coach. Like it's not even just. The swearing. It's yeah, not even. I'll talk about that. But yeah, yeah, but it's just like every every time he's on interview, like he just doesn't have anything to say, and like he's always like, I don't, I don't know. like. Someone needs, yeah, someone needs to. He does not look comfortable. No, uh, I mean no. he hasn't been in that situation too terribly often. Right. Although he's been a great player for a long time, he just hasn't been like the guy that people want to interview right. Right that often. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. and, you know you'll get used to it, or he'll get used to it. So anyway, he won the group. Cien third place. Five and two. Filipino champ was four and three. He was fourth. Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, it was he, he was one of the people that were, we were almost kind of scared might not make it just because of character choice. But. Yeah, but he did. He did well. MOV, yeah. fifth place. Dude, he played Chun Li so well. He played her like a brawler. Dude. He was rushing. He was doing all the tricky mix ups. Like everybody knows about instant pogo, right? Uh huh. Uh -huh. It's not like new tech. It's just. I feel like when I watch Chun Li's, it's usually that they don't do that stuff. It's, and in fact, I had become, you know, begun to think that maybe the way to play Chun was very defensive and counter pro right. heavy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then this guy comes out dashing around and doing all the mix ups <laughs> and the pressure, pressure, and not even like it wasn't even relevant that Stan Fierce wasn't the best anymore right. and that Antires weren't the best because he wasn't even there. He was in there. Right. He just never. He basically circumvented. I mean, yes. he overachieved with the character. I think so. I think he overachieved, but it shows the potential of what she can do. Yeah, which she's is not exciting. completely assed out. Right. Exactly. Right. Uh, wow, that was really sick. Tokido got sixth. And I mean that. I don't know. Do you think that that's more of a Tokido needs to work on things, or do you just think that Akuma is like? You know, I don't think Akuma is very good. Yeah, I know. I yeah. know. I still, I still believe that. I am open 
to having my mind changed. I'm not like set on Akuma being right. bad, but I still haven't seen anything that makes me think he has a good neutral game or that he has reasonable defense. Mm -hmm. Or even look, damage is great, but he has the same mix-ups that like everybody has. Right. Um, uh -huh, uh -huh. It's not like there's anything unique there. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's funny too because dude, everyone was saying that I'm like six feet tall because of ESL. Because I interviewed Nick Tanella and then I interviewed Shine. Oh, those giants. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, those so, true like, giants. I was like Nick half Tanella a head taller than them, so they yeah. all said I was standing on a box like Tasty Steve did that one week. He actually did. He did to interview Commander Jesse, yeah, because yeah. Commander Jesse is like nine foot eight, I right? I mean, he's not, he, what is he, probably 6'3". Yeah. He's, he's, he is tall, but he's not like absurd. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, those guys are just very short. Yeah, so I was like half a head taller than Nick Tanel. I looked like a giant the whole interview yeah. process. It was quite, it was nice. It was yeah. nice yeah. to actually feel like what it was like to be a tall Asian. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, Akuma's gonna get 25 more life in the next patch, right. and I just don't think that's... that's not... I mean, is it gonna help? Sure, you survive maybe one or two more hits, right? Uh -huh. Fine. You can make one more mistake, maybe. But I don't. I still don't feel like he has, like, uh, active doing stuff. What? what do you want to do? I'm not sure, Akuma. The thing about it is 80, 20, extra 25 health at 800 to 9, 875 to 900 is less significant, I think, than at 1,000 to 25. Yeah. Like, I just feel like it's just... It's like, not enough to keep you above the threshold yeah, of you Yeah, because, live. like, that amount of increase is, like... I mean, I guess the other increase is actually on a percentage less. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, for sure. <sighs> it's just that uh, I don't know that having 900 is enough to survive right, uh -huh. either. And, and the thing about so. Akuma is it's in a weird way. I, I kind of... I mean, but you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say this, and this is true about 100% of the cast. But, okay. like, I feel like Akuma's kind of similar to Kami in a weird way that he has to throw people. Otherwise, no one will ever respect your meaties. You just got to block well, for all sure. day, right? Yeah. But, like, for him in particular, because that's, like, where all of his game comes from is this goofy meaty game, right? And if you just block everything, then he has to throw everything or go with goofy demon flip mix-ups, you know, which is either punch or throw, and it's just like, I don't know, and his footsies just aren't, they're just not good. I don't think so. So, watching Tokido play that character is impressive because he plays it so well, mm -hmm. and yet, I watch him play often enough, and I think, man, Tokido is so good, he's losing. I'm curious, though, because, I mean, like, Seijan, uh, so someone in the chat says Seijan believes Akuma's top five with comprehensive changes in mind. I mean... That basically means that applies to everybody, right? Everybody is top five with comprehensive changes in mind. Yeah, right? what, what is meant by comprehensive changes? Is that yeah. the next patch? I don't I'm know. Just, I really don't think that Steven thinks that I, he's going to be top five in the next patch. Right, I think he's probably just saying if you tweak these small things, he could be top five. But like I said, that's true about sure. everybody, right? So that's like literally every character. It, of course. So, yeah. Yeah, teleports Dude, bad. Sorry, this chair is the damage so is low. Is is uh, sorry not the damage. The life is low. I don't think he's awful. I don't think he's bottom three, right? I do think he's not great, and I do think that you should be playing great characters in this thing. Yeah, especially you could win a prize in a prize pool of two hundred and fifty k. All right, you got to bring your best stuff. All right, it's not joking around time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Tokido sixth. Seventh place, K Brad. K Brad got seven. He was one and six overall. One win, six that losses. That blows my I mind. I could not believe that. That was it, such a surprise. It, it, you know what's interesting about it to me, though? It's almost. He only beat Gutex, and it was two to one. The only thing that I'm thinking right now is like. Is Cami as strong as we think she is? We did. We both did this last week. We both said she was number one. That's right. And like, I, just after what Shine did today at ESL, like, she, like I'm like, I was like, Karen is really good. And Michael Na responded, he was like, Cami is like, he's, I mean, Karen is obviously better than Cami, for example. And I was like, I don't know. And like, all this stuff is happening, but like, I don't know. My 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 belief is cracking right now. Okay. I, my belief is cracking a little bit. Like. Everyone always asks me, why do I think she's number one? I, she has everything. She's yeah. really solid. But she just doesn't have anything that's inherently cheap. That's just the thing. Uh, that's oh, yeah. Not too much. Gray damage probably the, is probably the closest gray damage, thing. Fierce, but, standing pierces are pretty ridiculous. Yeah. But, but, yeah, I mean, it's not... Mm, it's not low four to Aegis, you die, yeah, right? Okay, so, enough, yeah. you know, kind of thing. Or, hey, 
Balrog, you blocked his crouching medium kick, yeah, and then yeah. you stood up. Right. And then yeah, the yeah. second hit hit you, and then he goes, <laughs> whoa, and then you it. die, right? No, I, so, I, I, I don't know. Um, I still think that she is uh, better than those two, but... Um, uh, yeah, but some people are saying that K-Brad just didn't look very good. I that think that's day. true, too. So, yeah. okay. Uh, all right, well, K-Brad, second to last. Last in last place and Gutex. also first place. Yes, definitely the winner in a, in a certain <laughs> respect. Uh, that would be the Goots. That Gutex. Gutex. Not Ryan Gutierrez, all right? That was not Ryan no. Gutierrez. All right, if you go back and you, you tell Ryan Gutierrez 10 years ago with his long hair and his beard and whatnot, this is how you're going to look? No way. There's Dude, no I don't way. even know if that was Gutex. That was some. That was like Gutex 4, 5.0 because it was from the future, right? Yeah. It was future text, right? Yeah, yeah. he like, had quite style. Because it wasn't even just the look too, but like his whole persona was different. Yeah, like dude. he was playing this weird kind of like stoned kind of like <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, like he was like yeah the whole time and yeah, like, yeah yeah it was only at the end when they interviewed him at the end and they, they, they took his shoot. glasses off then he looked like Ryan but yeah. other than that it was like quite a show. So although he got his butt kicked in the games, uh, he, man, he, he won. He won. It's so smart. It's so smart because he goes into this, you know, frankly, not expecting to win the whole thing, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you got to be perfectly honest about it. Uh, not expecting to win the whole thing. Maybe he qualifies in the second round. That's going to be hard. But for sure, <laughs> what he can control is, or at least influence to a large degree, is is how much publicity comes from this yes. how many impressions how many click throughs how yeah. many views how much more uh, of an audience will he have yeah now. how many people will remember him right like every i mean they said that after that wednesday like literally the entire like timeline was nothing but gutex memes did you see the Gutex in history memes. No, where some people have been photoshopping him into the background of like famous, like like a uh, long oh, time, like the signing awesome. of the Declaration. Yeah, they like sneak him in there. <laughs> yeah, like, that's even great. sometimes it's like really small, dude. I think it's genius, that's great. dude. I think it's genius. So. That's very funny. Yeah, uh, he he was very very smart about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but he did finish in last place, so he's out of there. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, it's not that he got ripped open in every match. Yeah. Gutex is not a bad player. I mean, he's he can definitely be strong. Uh, like I said, I think, you know, probably unlikely to expect that you win group. But <laughs> you're in. You think you're in carrying him? Wow. <laughs> no, no, Oh, no. my goodness. I no. can't say that again because, yeah. I mean, look, the Urian players didn't do very well. Right, that's just, true. Let's just yeah. say that much. Uh, so. No, but he he's a good player. He just, uh, you know, there's a few Evo champs in there and mm. so forth. It's a tough group, tough group. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that that was probably the scariest group out of all of them. That's what I expected. I mean, yeah. but then... I mean, I, two of them had to lose, but I didn't expect K. Brad to be K-Brad one and six. Was, I gotta tell you that, that one is scary. And yeah, that's true. It was really weird that he decided to go with the hitbox. It was, but then he said later that he felt, even though he had picked it up pretty recently, that uh, he felt the same effectively on stick and on hitbox. Mm-hmm. So why not just use this opportunity to test it test out, it out in right. a pressure situation? Mm-hmm. That made that made sense to me. Yeah, I makes think that's sense. fine. Makes sense. And I mean the hitbox, I feel like is the right way to go in the, in, in oh, the yeah. end anyway. Oh, yeah. So definitely agree. Uh, so yeah. all right, Wolf Crone, Fudo. These are the results. We'll talk about the results. We'll get to the rest of that stuff afterward. Yeah. Uh, and then in Pool D, I think not too many people's surprise. Knuckle Dew won it. Mm-hmm. No shock. First no place, shock. six and one. Who did he lose? I think it might have been Phenom who lost too. Let's see. Uh, uh, do. Two, 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 two. Wow, was it the last yeah, one that he lost? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, the, it was the second to last of the day. Okay, okay. Uh, overall, that, uh, that he lost in. So, uh, Phenom got second place. Five and two mm-hmm. overall. Uh, when we had talked about this in advance, we thought that probably Knuckle Dew. And then I think we said Luffy. Also. I picked Luffy for sure. Did you, I pick Luffy? I don't remember. I think you were kind of. I think you were flip flopping on Luffy and Chow Hai. Oh, then I probably went with Luffy because okay, I just okay. feel like I can't bet on Shanghai. Right, but, right. Uh, I, you know, it's certainly reasonable to think Phenom would get top two mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. sure, uh, but I don't think we picked it. So, um, Phenom second place. Luffy was third. They were well, both five and two. Remember, Phenom also didn't do great at South by Southwest, right? right? So, right. Okay. Uh, Luffy five and two. Phenom five and two. Shanghai got fourth. 
four and three again. You just don't know if he's going to mm-hmm. be the best or not. Mm-hmm. You just don't know, and he didn't look bad. I wouldn't think, but right. you know, Chris Tatarian, fifth place, three I'm and four overall. Quite proud of Chris making it to fifth place. I, I thought it was awesome. I was I was really happy to see that. I mean, I picked him as one of the guys who was going to fall out. Yeah. And um, like I said, I just felt like it was more a mental thing than anything. But he persevered. He started kind of bad, if I remember. He was like one in like lost to Phenom, beat Joe, then lost to Shao Hai, then lost, lost to Luffy. Yeah. So he's and then to Knuckle Dude. So he was right. one in four, and then right. he had to battle back. Uh, so when I saw that, I was yeah. like, well, peace out, Chris T. And then he won the next two. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's he was awesome. able to get to three. Very and happy four, for him. So, yeah. All the Ken players qualified into the next round. Ding. Uh, Ken better than Yuri in yeah. fact. <laughs> yeah. Fact. Uh, Ryan Hart also sixth. Uh, I actually picked Ryan to not qualify, right. and my reasoning uh, was that I had thought that he was planning his wedding, uh, or he yeah, or he had gotten married. Right, I think right, actually yeah, was yeah. what it was. Uh, I was uh, Info was planning. Ryan right, that was, was that married. Was, right, that was my reason why I didn't think Ryan Hart was going to do well at Capcom Cup, if you remember yes. as well, because I just figured he would be busy. With yeah, the that's what I figured like that, as well so. for this. So mm-hmm. there you go, though. He he does do it. Three and four overall. Mm-hmm. LPN seventh place eliminated. Mm-hmm. Two and five, and Li Joe eighth place eliminated. Zero and seven. Yeah. Again. Someone went zero and seven in every single pool. They did. There was one zero and seven player. Uh, I was not expecting that to be Joe, but in the end, like, n- no disrespect to Joe, I'm not super surprised by that. Yeah. But that's also because I know he has been busy. He hasn't been practicing as yeah. much. He hasn't been playing as much. And He's when, got Dark Souls DLCs to, for sure. to, to, to be concerned about. When so. he did Aegis setups, they are definitely like, the four month old Asia setups. <laughs> they weren't they weren't like hot off the presses Asia right, setups. They right. were like uh-huh, uh-huh. The, the old stuff. So that's that's always the thing with Joe. Mm-hmm. Right? I feel like every game it's the same story. He's awesome at the start because he likes it. It's new, it's fresh, he's playing it a lot and he's a really talented guy. So he does really well. Mm-hmm. Gear, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's like really uh-huh. any game. And then he falls off because he doesn't like it anymore. Right. And I, he just doesn't keep it up, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I can't remember. So, I mean, like, I remember he was saying that if he had qualified into the next round, like, that might have been the signal for him to, like, because his work wasn't going to let him, like, take that many yeah. days off and stuff like that. But I'm just telling you, man, like, Twitch is, like, missing a big opportunity hmm. here, dude. Just hire Joe, get him out to San Francisco. Have him be your FGC representative to replace Mike Ross, and you're good to go. Capcom great Co. To talk with Li Joe. That sounds great to me too. <laughs> uh, I I really think that Joe is a very strong player who just doesn't uh, keep the fire burning. Yeah, he just doesn't. Uh, yeah, one, it's like not as much time, and two, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's it's hard for him to stay with that. To stay in it. For yeah, very I mean, long, so. he had a lot of work earlier uh, last year. And yet he won. He won um, ECT. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, and then he got top eight uh, at Evo. So I mean, uh, even though he was uh, working, he was playing a lot. Like right, he definitely can right. do this stuff. It's just can't. Mm-hmm. Does he want to? So anyway, Joe's out. So there you go. Those are the groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, some things that I wouldn't have predicted, but I think overall, you know. Well, the eight guys that made, it in there. To, that made it to TV already. The ones who don't have to play in round two. Yeah, so that's Punk and Momochi. No shocks there, right? That's pretty, like, okay, makes sense. Sure. Pierre Balrog and Snake Eyes. That one's a surprise to me because okay. I was not expecting Snake Eyes to make it up there. Okay. Because I know that, you know, he's been having a little bit character crisis and such. Uh, he, though, is picking up Akuma yes. as a way to beat some of Geef's bad matchups. Mm-hmm. I think it's fine. Like I said, I don't think that Guma's that great, but I do think that he does better against Thalsum, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, Guile, like right, whatever. Right, so, right. so there are those two, and then Wolf Crone Fudo. I'm not sure I would have picked Fu- Wolf Crone, but it's not a big surprise to me that mm-hmm. he's in there, certainly. I mean, the Japanese players were all even saying, like, and, and there was three Japanese players in that pool, right? Yeah. 
Uh, only one Japanese player wasn't in that pool, and that was Daigo. Yes. But uh, I think it was Fudo, or one of the guys was saying on Topanga TV or something after they got back, or maybe right afterwards on Twitter, that in Japan there's no Laura that is like that level at all. Yeah, they un- they underrate her. Yeah, uh, they don't have her in top five ever. Uh, I never see that. Yeah, because yeah, they're always like, oh, Zangief just slaughters her, you know, yeah. all this other. They just they don't have any respect for that character, yeah. and... I think that they ran into a character unfamiliarity for them. So I think so. I think yeah. so. And like I said, there was three the Japanese players in there. Three players in there who have no lore experience. Oh, do you think that was obviously not on purpose? But do you think that pool was like geared toward Wolf Crone? I think that Doing helped him. Well? I think that helped him. Interesting. For sure. I feel like any Laura player would have did well in that pool because that would have been three hmm. easier wins against the Japanese. I mean, well, what was his record against them? What was that his record against question. Fudo? Sure. So Wolf Crone. Fudo. So he beat Fudo 2-0. Two zero. Two zero. Four to one rounds. And he beat MOV. That was two oh, to one. That was three games, though. It was very close. Very it was. close. Yeah. And then... He beat Tokido two to one. Okay, very close as well. So I okay, mean, not okay. not blobs, but he did beat all right, those. Right, 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 right. Okay. Uh, you know, maybe the, maybe the same for PR Balrog. That Balrog, um, I've seen maybe one strong rog in mm, Japan, mm. and he's a guy who, as far as I know, is not playing offline. Okay. Uh, okay. Really high ranked Balrog player. Maybe right. he plays offline too. I just didn't, I've never seen it. So I I don't know. Yeah, uh, Iwate is who I'm thinking of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't think he's a scrub. Oh yeah, well no, none of the I don't people think he's a scrub. scrub. Yeah, I, I'm not sure he's PR Balrog level <laughs> or smug, but uh, he seems good. Yeah, I saw a debate on know. Twitter today about who was the better Balrog, PR Balrog or smug, and like I could see arguments from both. And I mean, honestly, right now I, it's it's hard not to pick smug because he's just blowing everybody up. So for now, I, I would say smug. That is said, better. there you had Eduardo. Yeah, six true. and one overall. That's true. Who did, did he only lose the Snake Eyes? Probably. Yeah, he lost the Snake Eyes. He lost the Snake Eyes. And there that one go. was super close. It was super, close, right? Super close, yeah. That matchup's not so bad. <laughs> uh, okay, so that means that the groups, the preliminaries are over, and now there's going to be like the 24 players left. I think it's like 16 of them have to work on getting into... Yeah, 16 of them have a round two. So Yes, and then after that, the people who qualify from that round two... Coach we'll play against the eight who have already guaranteed themselves. Right. So I think whatever. eight more players are going to get into the next round so that those it'll be 16 for TV, I believe. Good enough for me. <laughs> if only we had somebody who regularly comes on this show who might know more. <laughs> but, oh well. Oh man, these tournament formats are also confusing. I swear, but you know what? It's for maximum entertainment factor. So you know, more matches, more matches, the better. Yeah, and so. and I I'm cool with the uh, with the with the groups with the poli- with the preliminaries. You mm-hmm. know, um, it would it wouldn't have been possible to have been three out of five games. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. just was so long anyway. Even if you took out a lot of those breaks, still yeah. three out of five. Rather than two out of three? Do you remember Capcom no Cup? No way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you remember Capcom Cup and the four hours wait between matches for some players? I do. Anytime you won a match as a player, when you move on to winner's bracket, you have to wait longer to play your matches because you do winners, losers, losers, winners, losers, losers, winners, losers, losers. That's generally how you do it. And uh, some of those players who won had to wait like four hours between their matches. It was pretty... I remember that. Pretty gnarly. It was a bummer. Pretty gnarly. Uh, okay, well, since there is a bracket on their actual website. Oh, cool. <laughs> Shout outs to eLeague.com. Dude, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're so used to have tournaments just not having any of this stuff. Uh, so, what happens is, as you can see, you can't, you can't see, but you can. What, what's the link? What's the e-league.com. link? eLeague.com. And then from there, it's an easy navigation. eLeague.com. Wait, you mean it's not buried behind like some ridiculous 17 Head over to bracket. It's right there. All right, hang on a second. I just want to not have this zoomed in so I can get this on here. Sure. Uh, bracket. Check bracket. that out. Wow. There's this whole thing called Dang. Bracket on here. But unfortunately, it doesn't zoom. Well, it kind of squishes itself. Yeah. But hang on. Let's see if I can get this onto the screens. Hang on. You're probably going to see a blank desktop for just a little bit. Oh, no. Oh, come on, XSplit. I'm clicking your buttons, XSplit. Let's go. Oh, it's there. Nice. Okay. But look how... Oh, gosh. 
Oh no, that was too much. Uh, uh, well, this website obviously doesn't do well. Why don't you by... just do? Uh, why don't you? Yeah. Wait, Wait oh. where did it go? Oh, you went to the preliminaries. Oh, is go. that what I did? Bracket. Okay, okay, okay. So here's the bracket. You're gonna try to squeeze it. I'm gonna try. No, too much. Yeah, it's not gonna work. But uh, go back out a little bit. Okay. And why don't you just uh, do the zoom thing? Yeah, why don't you just zoom? Up, zo- yeah, there you go. Control mouse wheel down. Okay. Oh, well, no, this works. Okay, there we go. So there we go. Bracket. Hey, all right. Hey, we have a bracket. So here you go. Winner's side. Smug versus Julio. Infiltration versus... Bur- that oh, is so unfortunate. They haven't, fi- they haven't filled out the other two. They haven't filled out all the names in here. They're what do you mean? two names. It's TBD and TBD over here. That's... Uh, no, that's the people who play against them, right? Wait, why are... Do some people start in loser's bracket or something, or...? This may not be as self-evident as I had thought. <laughs> ah, yeah. Why does it do that? That is so weird that when you squeeze it, it just jumps to the preliminary page. It's so weird. Okay. Well, um, yes. So if you look here, I'm not sure how this works. Single elimination, no losers bracket. Right, but it says winners bracket, which is weird. Right, and, and then it says elimination bracket down underneath. So, so there probably is. And plus, the other thing too is there's supposed to be eight. There's supposed to be sixteen players. Well, there's different brackets. I mean, this is Group A. Oh, this is Group A. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Um. So Smug and Julio will play each other. So, all right, well, all we can talk about, I guess, is the first rounders. Yeah, Fine. Okay. This sucks for infiltration. Berlino beats them every time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't like that for infiltration, i got to tell you. I think that's not a good look for him. I think he might not make it through. Well, group B, we have... Oh, these are the guys who have already qualified. Yeah. Of course, duh, I see. They're just waiting over yeah. there. for. Okay, 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 got it. Okay, everything makes sense. Everything makes sense now to me. Okay. Yes. All right. Sorry. Brain not. Oh, and PR Balrog is in the loser side. No, he's, no, he's no, in the winner side. side. Why is like... he in the elimination bracket? I th- there must. I feel like they they missed a crook. In yeah. There. So there's something there's missing. Some, there's over one of these here. not yeah. uh, not in there. So, uh, Eta versus Daigo. Right. They play. Whoever wins plays the winner of Justin versus Gamer B. Oh, then man. they play, and then winner of them plays against Snake Eyes. And so However. On the loser's side, the losers of those two play against each other. They get into the next. And because PR Rog won the group, he gets to face off against the loser, thinking that's probably the worst of the two potential matchups. Right. Okay. Okay. Excellent job. Solved. Excellent detective work. Excellent detective work. Anyway, Eita versus Daigo. Who do you like? Actually, go back to A. Let's just let's just say who who just who who do you like it? Who do you like it? All right, all right. Julio versus Smug. Smug, I think is going to take that one. Yes. Infiltration of Berlino. Berlino. Uh, Gotta go with history. Okay. I don't believe in Jerry. Sure. sure. Okay. So and then who, after that? Smug versus Berlino. Berlino versus Smug. Smug. I like Smug. Yes. Uh huh. And then we'll wait anyway, until the yeah. next round. And we'll do the next later. Okay. Whatever. So Ata versus Daigo Umehara. I like Ata. He's wild man. I don't think Daigo plays this game correctly. I think he's terribly smart and doesn't play the game well. Okay. Okay. Justin Wong versus Gamer B. Actually, what do you think? What first? Justin, I think Justin's good. Justin always seems to have Gamer B's number. What do you think about Ata Daigo? Ata Daigo? So Daigo's probably going to go with Guile again. He's probably practicing probably. a lot, and it's because he's, it's not practicing for a round robin. It's practicing for one human. Mm. I think that might kind of give. Prep time Daigo. Yeah, prep time Daigo. I might have okay. to give it to Daigo for now, and then we'll have a Daigo Justin match. Got it. Got it. That actually yeah. would be very cool. Yeah, Daigo Justin, good rivalry. You should bust out the security guards. Ah! Uh, Anyways, um, so yeah, I think uh, Daigo and Justin will probably face each other in the next round. And then, I don't know, it'll be weird. Like, I like Ata, but yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all right. Gamer okay. B, best of luck, my friend. You're yeah. my dude. C bracket, Sien and Tokido. Oh boy. Oh boy, I definitely like Sien here. Yeah, I think Sien's gonna take that one for uh, sure. So M O V Filipino Champ. Wow. I'm gonna say F Champ. I'm gonna say F Champ also. It also does work against I like it. Chun-Li. That said, F Champ's 
Chun experience is Ricky, and Ricky is a strong player, but she's not playing Chun in the way that MLB, MLB plays yeah. Chun. Uh-huh, so uh-huh. he's gonna have to pick up on that offense real fast. But you know, he'll. Uh, he's like he's said, a smart I just feel like he's just gonna float up. He's gonna yeah. sentinel over there and just go rocket punch all rocket day, punch, and yeah. it's like not much. There. Yeah, I think I like F Champ as well. Yeah, I think F Champ's gonna take that one. So all right. What about F Champ versus CN? If that happens, I like CN. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, uh, okay. Finally, we got the last, the last pool. Luffy. Wow, really? Oh. Luffy, Ryan, Hart have to play each other? Tough. Europe has to go against Europe. I mean, I think Luffy's got that one just because Ryan Hart, as we mentioned, hasn't been playing as much, and Luffy is very strong right now. Who won the last time they played? It's a good question. Well, I'll look it up for you. Let's see, that was in D, correct? Mm hmm. Excuse me. Woo. All right, Luffy. He beat Ryan Hart two to one. Sure enough, uh-huh. there you go. There okay. you go. Okay. Yeah, I, I like I like Luffy. Mm-hmm. And then Chris Terrian versus Shao Hai. Mm. Didn't they play each other at Capcom Cup and Shao Hai like barely won? I remember Chris T like trying to make a valiant effort against him, but shoot, I can't remember now. In any case, uh, I think Shao Hai will probably take that one. Yeah, it was two to one Shao Hai uh, okay. when they played at yeah. E League. Yeah, I think that's probably true. Okay. But, I mean, I look. Nobody could say that they're sleeping on Ryan Hart. That'd be crazy pants. He's been. Dude, I was already upset forever. that everybody was like counting him out. Like they were thinking he was going to be the guy going zero and seven in that pool for a while. Just, I saw it's some just people too good. talking. I mean, about even if that. he hasn't been playing that often, whatever his situation is, <laughs> that man can sit away from fighting games for a long time and come back, and he is. Pretty good. It's like that meter fill yeah. analogy I had last yes, week. Yes, that was right? a very good analogy. Uh, but his meter dra- drains slowly. Evo champion. He's he an Evo. He won Tekken. Yeah. And like he's a legend in Tekken. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, okay. All right. So well, we go. I feel like that's a tough draw for some of those people in there, but um, yeah, that'll be interesting to see. So watch that in the coming weeks. Yeah, I'm it's not... going to be one week at a time, right? So I believe group so. A is going to be on a Friday, then group B is going to be on the next Friday, et cetera, et cetera, et okay. cetera, as it goes. Gotcha. And then at some point, there's the top, the final 16, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or no, actually, if we were to go back to that. Uh... Oh, and check the schedule page or something? Well, actually, I just wanted to see. Uh, if you look at each of the groups, that bracket, uh-huh. way towards the right of it, it says winner, group A, TBD. So oh. what might happen, I don't know, but this seems like a good reading to me, is that each group will have its winner. And then it'll be like, the winners play against each other. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So there might just I be four people for the final folks. episode or something like that. That's my guess. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll... We'll see. <laughs> it's like you said, it's too bad we didn't have somebody who knows how this entire bracket works. Right? Wouldn't that be genius? Here on the show, helping us out. That's what I think. <laughs> uh, alrighty. So, gameplay was all good. Awesome to watch. Yay to my friends, and boo for my other friends who didn't do as well. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the uh, commentary pairings were quite good. Mm-hmm. I liked, mm-hmm. I liked the, uh, Steve's work. I liked the Z's work. I liked the Rip's work. I actually felt like the standout was Z. Z was great, man. Uh, towards the end, he also started doing something that I was kind of lamenting, huh. which was, this is going to be the first time a lot of people are watching it. It's going to be a lot of CSGO fans watching E-League or sure. even a lot of other people, and nobody was explaining anything. Like, there was a particular match, I believe it was Luffy versus F-Champ. It was, it was Mika versus F-Champ. It was either Fudo or Luffy, whichever one were in the same pool. But there was multiple times that Armika did an alpha counter, V-reversal, hit F-Champ when F-Champ had no life, and F-Champ didn't die. And, like, of course that makes sense to us, but everyone sure. watching is going to be like, what happened? That's true, that makes sense. Why, why isn't he dead? You okay. know, and, like, things like that would happen, and I was like, nobody's explaining this. And then on the, like, it was like the second to last day or the last day, all of a sudden Z just started busting out like, oh yeah, this is the whiffs, this this is how this works, you know, in this kind of situation. Like, he started explaining everything and I was like, oh, it's good stuff. Thank you, Z. I was actually For really sure. happy. And some of his references were just like ridiculously on point. So. <laughs> Man, I mean, there were a couple that were like maybe a little bit too over the moon, but... Um, but I was really happy to see that he had a balance for the most part of uh, restraint. 
Z, mm -hmm. but like without forgetting his unique stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like a good mix, I felt, for almost right. the whole time. So right. I liked that a lot. That was cool. Yeah. But you can definitely tell how Z thinks. Oh yeah. Just words are just in there. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Like day. listen listen to that guy tell Joe. I'm sure everybody else realizes it, but if you if you haven't, when he comes out with a joke, think back two seconds ago. What happened there? And just like see like the thing. It's like <laughs> there's clearly like a, and then there's like definitely B. Right. Uh, there's like definitely B. You know what I mean? That's right, like clearly right. related directly. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes you'll see, he doesn't do this very often anymore, but he would like go on these little rambles. Mm -hmm. It's like a little staircase, you know? Right, nah, nah, right. Nah. It's like a little slinky falling down it, and you yeah. can just like see he can't stop himself. Right. He's just a slinky. And, and that's the thing too, like. But he's, he's done better at that. The, the, the crazy thing about it was like they had all those breaks. Those could have been perfect times where they could have just had someone sitting there going, you've probably heard us say Jump Tech OS. This is what a Jump Tech OS is, and just had someone explain it. You know what I mean? Like, I just felt like there was an opportunity for that. I hope that's something that they do more for the TV broadcast, because it's going to be more important, yeah, I think, for, for the sure. TV broadcast. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens there. But I, I really... Uh, I actually honestly felt like Z was kind of the standout to me out of everybody. So sweet tie, Did you see that tie? No, I didn't. I heard people talking about it. I missed the it's tie. Cool. So it's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So they had the moment of uh, Wolf Crone and the K Brad there. Yes. Uh, yes. So they are. They have a rivalry, and at final round, Wolf uh, K Brad won, and he Pop got off. in Wolf Crone's face, popping off. Yeah, he wasn't uh, fighting, obviously, but he like. Definitely right in his face, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, to Wolf Crone's credit, if you watch the video that's from the side, and you've seen uh, the side uh, footage, uh, Wolf Crone was like smiling and he was like taking it well. He, yeah, was, yeah, he was looking at uh, K Brad, uh, he wasn't uh, like shying away. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Props uh, to him uh, for that. Uh, I thought that was really he good. He looked at that, he even applauded him. Yeah, he applauded, yeah. Uh, and, and to K Brad's credit, he wasn't even yelling at him. Right. He just right. was just like, come on, what do you want us, what are you yeah. going to say? You know, he didn't act, sure. it wasn't like aggressive you know it I mean, was aggressive, it was, it was aggressive <laughs> but it wasn't like it was i didn't feel like he was trying to start anything no he's not gonna fight obviously right yeah um so anyway for the when they played on the e-league uh they had a a security guard there uh they brought in the security yeah guards. i mean so he is the real security guard mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah right uh, but uh, like for that shot they brought him in Zoomed in on Zoom him, in on him, focused on him. Yeah, yeah. like uh -huh. clearly it was the shtick. Uh, and the question is, is that cool or not? It's right. not. It's not. Was it a shtick or not? Because yeah, it was definitely just duh. something that they wanted but, to play up. And, uh, and I know that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, people, but like uh, uh, obviously, uh, uh, duh. Anyway, right? Uh, uh, was it cool or not? Um, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. To be mm -hmm. perfectly frank, mm -hmm. um, I thought that it was not the best. In general, I like to have events provide the area the the place for the hype to happen yes mm -hmm. but i don't want them like creating it necessarily. right i want like the players mm -hmm. should do it but like mm -hmm. i don't need to mm -hmm. have the mm -hmm. thing but it's not that big of a deal right i wasn't like right it's not like uh. um anyway what, what, what was I, that i was more concerned about it i didn't really like it too much i thought it was Look, I mean, a lot of people are going to think it's funny, right? I mean, but this is the thing, right? This is all coming from people who understand the backstory and all this stuff, right? A lot of people in the chat saying that it was hilarious and everything, and they understand it. They know that people aren't actually going to fight. Right, but yeah. But again, again, because I'm always looking at it from the new audience perspective, that's the part that concerns me. It's not the sure. people that's already in the FGC. If this were just a Twitch stream... Yeah. Like, and it wasn't Ely. Like, if this was Capcom Fighters, okay. it would be like... If it didn't be, have, like, a new audience. Yeah, it would be funny if, like, Chris Lee ran back there and was just, like, standing over Maybe there. So. You know, yeah. something like that, right? Because you know that's the audience is already there, right? If it was just, like, a final round or something like that. A additionally, I think that having somebody like Chris Lee, a member of the community, would be a different story rather than... Right. Exactly. Security guard. Exactly. Or maybe like, maybe, like, you give whoever... Maybe, like, Justin gets a security guard outfit. Right, right, yeah, like, yeah, like whoever. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know what I mean, like exactly. That. Anyway, but also, I mean, it's just yeah. I mean, I'm a little bit concerned about it because it does play into you know potentially racial stereotypes. Yeah, the only two black players in that group, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Um, when they played their one match against each other, there was the security, security guard guards there. there right. right. Yeah. And and um, so here's the thing, right? Yeah. So here's the thing. 
No, it wasn't racist. Yeah, I don't. I right? really don't think it's so. It's not racist really. at all, right? But the thing Certainly about it is, it's it's always one of those things, and this is the tricky part with just how things work in general. If some people are offended by it, and some people did think it was tasteless, some people were offended by it. You have to talk with them. You have to ask them and figure out why it was offensive. And evaluate whether maybe or not you shouldn't have done that or not, regardless if it was a good joke or not. You know what I mean? It's that's just one of the natural adult things that you do. You know, when you're off- when someone says they're offended by them, you don't blow them off. You don't just like like oh you you're just mad because of this. You know what I mean? You sit there and you go okay. I can see where you're coming from. That's not what we intended to do. Yeah. We were just trying to have a little fun. Yeah, I really But I get your point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's the adult way to respond to things. Sure. So, you know, that's... <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, yeah, again, I don't, think, I don't think you think that it was a racist thing, but no, I do think no. that there's a chance that people coming in and watching things for the first time might think that's weird. Uh, I don't know. I mean... I, that's, I guess, uh, part of why I wasn't super concerned about it, because I, I don't really think that there were that many people who were would be in that boat mm-hmm. this time. Right. If it's like, I don't know, when I, this wasn't on TV. Right, right. right. But if, if that is on TV, uh, maybe a different story. In any case. Um, and then, yeah. so to add to that, I, I also, I talked about this on a stream when I was streaming Zelda, because everyone keeps asking me about it mm. anyway. But the other thing, too, I think you kind of mentioned it, is that the hype that happened at final round was of the player's creation. Yes. And that to me is important. Yes. It's important for me to not have the production, the tournament, to try to craft drama. Correct. You know what I mean? Like if, I agree. Like, if that's the case, why not rig brackets so that rivalries happen? Why not do all these kind of things to get the best show? And to me, I feel like that is... Not what I prefer. I would prefer... So the whole Wolf, Wolf Chrome K-Brat thing that happened at Final Round happened because of the players. They yeah. did it. With players in the background. With the players in the background. But everybody got hype. It wasn't like Final Round got on the microphone and was like, here we go, everyone get over here, blah, blah, blah. And like cameras, every, you know what I mean? Like it was just like it happened. And every, it, just, it was a natural thing that everyone was like, oh shit, K-Brat and Wolf Chrome <laughs> yeah. play. Oh quick, run. And everyone ran over there and it happened in the pop-off and, and, and K-Brat did the pop-off. But what they did with the security guards, they're trying to play it up. And then the interview afterwards, they were really trying to get those guys to like fight and everything like that. So that was the part I wasn't a fan of. And yeah, it makes for good TV, but I just think good TV in a reality show format like this happens naturally. Yeah, I'd much rather you know have I mean? it be I, I, natural. I think it's I think it's a little bit better when it just happens by itself. I like I certainly That's don't true. want some uh I guess it's reality TV guy, right? I mean maybe, I, maybe like technically it's under like Kingdom Reality TV. Well, I mean like the, I'm referring it to that way even as like sports. Sports yeah, is I just they, reality I guess they are TV, too. right? I guess, yeah. I mean, that's Never just all it that, is, right? Basketball no, is you're, reality you're right. TV. It's real. Yeah. Uh, but, Dude, because I mean look. How many times do you sit there listen to guys talk about sports and like, yo, this guy got traded. Oh, man, I can't wait to see they come back and fight each other on the same team, blah, blah, blah. Like, people love that. They eat that shit up, right? But, like, when it happens naturally, I think it's more interesting. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah, I really don't want to have some uh, more produced reality TV type of thing. Like, Mm -hmm. the thing that Justin was on, the whatever it was The WCG? (laughs) It was a pile of crap. Come on. It was stupid. Yeah, I used to hear stories about a lot of things that got edited in a certain way to make Dude. it seem like... so my cousin was on something. Uh-huh. Uh, America's Next Top Model. Okay, okay, And, okay. um, so... Oh, this is, the, this is the cousin that you haven't introduced me to yet. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so, uh, they, they had all these stupid things that they would do. They, when they put the women in the house for the first time, there was one fewer beds then there were people. Right. And so uh, it was like uh, instantly like, all right, we got to fight over the beds. Like right. it was, everything was yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, they definitely edited her to be the rich girl, you know? Uh, she, her dad's like a teacher. Like, <laughs> like, like, but they just edited it that way because like, hey, you got to have somebody. Right, right. Uh, uh, I really don't want that stuff. That would yeah. be 
stupid. So, I mean, I, 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 to their credit, they didn't do that kind of thing after that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that was on, I guess, Wednesday. Right. And I just want to guess two more days that they yeah, did it. Yeah. But um, I'd be surprised if they did that again because they, they asked for feedback. The people were very... Most of the people involved were uh, were all about getting feedback. <laughs> uh, you know, they asked yeah. specifically for it on the oh. show, on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, people DM'd me. I had a phone call with somebody at E League. Um, oh, really? For unrelated matters, but then they asked me, "Was it cool?" Oh, okay. Um, they were and uh, very into it. So that's that's part of why I like the production as as a whole was because when there were issues, game sound being low, oh, right? Yeah. They lessened uh, uh, the breaks. Yeah, they put two matches before Two matches breaks. before yeah, breaks. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they uh-huh. did listen to those things, and they did uh, change them, you know? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I, I, re- I really like that. All respect yeah. to them on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I like grown-ups. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> look, man, but you can't over- win them all, but... Look, overall, I thought the production was really good. Same. Overall, I thought it did a great job highlighting a lot of what the FGC is about. You know, and, and, you know, even guys like, uh, what is the League of Legends commentator, Monte Cristo, right? Like, he was even tweeting about it. He's like, man, I wish other esports were like this. You know, I wish that there was, like, Me trash too. talk in other esports and it was more exciting like this. I mean, we've always said that, and uh-huh. Uh-huh. I think that we've been correct about it. But I, I think that there's, you know, to go back to the uh, idea of wanting the, the players involved, the people involved to make the hype, not the event to make yeah, the hype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I, I don't I don't want it to be like that they need to do it. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't want it to be like oh we gotta tune into the fighting games because there's gonna be trash talk and there's right. gonna be jerks uh-huh. and whatever. I don't want that. I, right. If if the players want to do that stuff, then it happens. Fine, right. happens. Certainly, it's hilarious. I like it, but I don't want them to f- be forced into doing that because right. that's like I know I know this is nothing kind of, in that. I know this is kind of a touchy point on the matter, but you know one of my favorite things that I've ever heard from, uh, like, Seth Killian when he was on the Evo staff. And I know there's this little thing with the Evo staff because they were some of the more vocal people about not liking the security guard and stuff. But one of the things that Seth Killian has always said, he's always, like, this was uh, before, this was, like, in 010, 010, <laughs> in 10 or 2010 or, like, it was around that time. It was very early Street Fighter Four, Yeah. Right? And he said that, like, he said the craziest thing about Evo is that they never do anything to cause something crazy to happen. But something crazy happens almost every year. Right. And he was like, that's, he said, that's what Evo's legacy is going to be, is yeah. that they just provided a venue and then something crazy happens. I'm with that. And when that happens, that's when the Justin comeback against Yipes, that's when the, you know, double perfect on Daigo from Punko, the the crazy Sue Mighty four snapback combo. Like right. when that kind of stuff happens and it's organic. Yes. And the Daigo Perry, of course, right? Daigo the Daigo Perry, Perry right? That plays blue grand finals, right? right? I mean, like, I mean, like Daigo and Justin getting the grand finals in 2009, right? Like after right. the Daigo Perry, like having right. that happen, like they didn't like here, let's adjust this to yeah, for sure. make, like, if you build it, it will happen. You yeah. know, it's this build the dreams mentality, sure. and that's that's that should be the goal of these kind of environments. You yeah. know, the, the the amazing will happen as long as you provide the right environment for it. You know what I mean? And I don't think you have to worry too much about trying to, even if it's just a nudge. Like again, they didn't like sit there and just go like, ha ha, and right, yeah, an instrument. I'm not. Claim yeah, no, that totally. at any way. Totally. But like I just like even the slight nudges don't need to be there. I'm with you. You know what I mean? That's all it is, so I'm definitely with you. Okay. Uh alrighty. Cool. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess we'll be covering this as things go on because it's gonna be a weekly spiel. Mm-hmm. Uh man, those cats are gonna be traveling a lot. The Steves. Oh yeah. Woo! They're gonna be traveling back and forth every week. Every week. And if they want to go to a tournament, other than that, they fly out Saturday mornings. <sighs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know. It's going to be fun times. Yeah. Fun I mean, times. I, you know, I think they did a great job. It's just going to be, it's going to be tiring. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, again, overall thumbs up. Definitely overall thumbs overall up. Overall thumbs up. I'm like 90% happy with what they did. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Totally. Mm-hmm. And, and what I was not happy with. In terms of the production, 
was fixed. Right. And again, and you know, so, the thing anyway. is, everyone wants to hear us talk about the, the, the drama stuff, right? So it sounds like we're going to be down on the whole entire thing. But this is just how the world works anyway. You always talk about the negativity stuff. You don't get to sit there and go and, and talk about the positive stuff for very long. Because the positive stuff is like, yeah, they did a great job. The matches were great and everything. And then people are like, whatever, boring, boring right? Yeah, exactly. They don't want to hear it. So I don't want to make it sound like we're down on this. Yeah. yeah, we're definitely happy with everything that they did. So, yeah. That the production did. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Well. The production was great. Uh, did you want to talk about Sonic Boom now? Or do you want to take a break? Uh, yeah, yeah, we might as well just do it now. And sure, then sure, sure. Kind of. Blitz through it a little bit. Uh, Sonic Boom, a Capcom Pro Tour ranking event. Oh, that's a great topic, actually. Oh, yeah? That is, that is what I wanted to talk about. Thank you, Dago oh, Yumehara. Because FChamp okay. started going off about this on Twitter. Right, he was so, like, I want more invitations. Yes, I saw that too. Do you want to do that now, or do you want to have that discussion after Sonic Boom? Or what, what do you want to do in the order here? Let's do Sonic Boom, okay. take a break, okay. come back, and then we'll talk about We'll do that. it. So okay. CPT over in Madrid yes. in Spain. Lots of top European players were there, but there were some players from North America and from East Asia as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Street Fighter V was the big one. I think that was the only one that I saw, but in any case. Uh, was Street Fighter V the game that got him big in there? Okay. Just making sure. Just making sure. That's it was. Okay. okay. It was already there. I'm not going to use other words. Okay. Uh, I know them. Um, <laughs> so top eight. Actually, before we even do that, because there were interesting results. Ninth places included uh, Pax Karen, Brick Zangief, Akainu Guile, and Mika, and then Atrosh Birdie. Mr. Crimson Dawson was just outside of that. Wow. Uh, you know, so there were really interesting character variety. Then in top eight, Pax Karen. Something went wrong there. He probably wasn't both 7th and 9th. Uh, <laughs> Takamura B, Ken, uh, who was really cool to watch, more of an 8th style. DA, I'm Still the Daddy, 5th with Guile. Also, Cobblecog, 5th with Kami. 4th, Echo Fox, Justin Wong, Karen, and Chun Li. 3rd, mm -hmm. Zowie, Oil King, Rashid. 2nd place, Nasser, Big Bird with Ken. And then winner, Mouse Problem X with Birdie and Bison. He's been playing those characters. I haven't gotten to watch the UK streams very often because mm -hmm. it's uh, on the other side of the world and time zones are hard, but I know he's been playing Birdie more. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it very often, but I did watch this and he was super good. Yeah, and this is the second CPT event that Birdie has won. Yes. Because Mena RD took uh, the one in Latin America, so in Europe Birdie took it, so what does this mean? Is Birdie much better than we all thought? I, f I gotta tell you, I just didn't think that I had an opinion. Yeah, okay, I know, I, I understand. I just, didn't, I, just yeah, I felt like yeah, I could yeah. not uh -huh, uh -huh. come to an opinion on that character, because I've not seen him, I've not played against him, almost at all, in Season 2. Mm -hmm. Very rarely, very few people, in my experience at least, yeah, are playing I, him online. I remember Problem X beat Chris T at final, final round as well. I remember yeah, that, He's so a great yeah, player, yeah. of course, uh -huh. uh, and, and has been. Um, it's just, yeah, Birdie, um, I just felt like I couldn't, Come to any conclusions on. I asked Mena RD on Twitter what he thought his matchups mm -hmm. were. He said he thought he that Birdie only lost three matches. Right. I don't remember which ones now, to be honest. Which is uh, interesting, but, because most people, when they use their characters, like, man, this character's ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, shout out to Problem X. He identified a helpful character for him. I thought he picked him in good character matchups. For example, I definitely think it's better to play Birdie versus Ken than Bison versus Ken. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has more uh, uh, ways to deal with Ken's approach. So I, I feel like those two characters are uh, are cool. Interesting two to have and, and effective two to have. Yeah. Big Bird Ken, so strong. I didn't get to see any of his matches, but I heard the Grand Finals match was ridiculous. It was. They played in both Winners Finals and Grand Finals, and it was really good both times. Right. And it should be up on Twitter. Uh, is it up on YouTube already? Oh, I'm I'll not sure if it's on YouTube. I'll have to look for it. I'll have to look for it. It so. wasn't on Capcom Fighter's stream. It was okay. on Madrid oh, FGC. Well, some people are saying that Vega Patch Fong was in ninth place. Is he the one that Pax accidentally got written down twice? Oh, maybe at? so. Okay, so yeah, we had Pax as both seventh and ninth here. Yeah, but... so it was probably Vega Patch Fong in ninth place. Wow. So Fong made ninth place. All right, shout outs to Fong. Right. The week after Fong gets second place at that same Latin America CPT. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. And then, of course, Ricky and Flash... 
both were like in 17th place or something like that. Mm. I don't th- I, well, Ricky is playing Cameo. So she's ah, testing her new character. Working on that, I'm sure. Yeah, so she played only Cami at That's this good. event. Yeah. And Flash, man, did you see the, 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 the mob that got all happy when Flash lost? Poor guy, dude. That happened to him at... Uh, at, at, at the same event. Dominican, that, yeah. Uh, what was it called now? I don't know. Game over. Yeah, game over. It was the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> People are always celebrating when he loses. Oh, dude, poor boy. Flash. Uh, Oil King was super good. Do you think good. he's a Flash in the pan? Wow. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, but do you want to talk about... Uh, okay, so there you go. It was Sven. a really good event. Sven, the yeah. blind Ken. Yeah, man, the blind player. Yes, who won that one match. He, he did. won his match. Yes. He did win his match. So he so plays by sick. audio cues. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know this, but apparently Street Fighter V differentiates between left and right mm-hmm. audio output. Must. Yeah. Uh, uh, so if the opponent's on your left, then you'll hear the thing. Right. Or on the left of the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't know. Most fighting games are like that. Most fighting games have done that. Now, there was actually a really great YouTube video that I did watch a long time ago with a blind fighting game player. I don't think it was Fen. It was somebody else. Yeah. But he was talking about how important these audio cues were. In fact, he was a Killer Instinct player. Okay. And he was even talking about how like different fireballs would have different kinds of lengths of sounds like the different strengths of the fireballs and he was talking about all these really important things like when you hear the people walking like once they start merging on the middle of the screen the sound does kind of merge a little bit so it starts coming about and he was talking about how some games were missing a few of those things and he was talking about how important that was it was actually i mean it was a long video it was like it was he was just streaming Cool. And he was just talking about it, so it was kind of a stream of consciousness yeah. kind of thing. But it was a really long video, but I was watching it. I was just like, this is really interesting. And he was just talking about how he played, especially in a game like Killer Instinct where people teleport. You know right, what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's crazy, but it's it's really, really cool. It's he really he cool. even anti-aired somebody, the guy, he when he uh, won. Uh, uh, uh. He wasn't just mashing around. I mean, the yeah. guy jumped and he anti-aired? Like, you have to know where you are on screen to do that. So that was awesome. I... The craziest thing about it is, though, like, you're blind, right? And so it's just like, I, I can't even picture what the game in the brain looks like because there's nothing to see. I think see. you're asking the wrong question. Right, yeah. But yeah, exactly. But, like, you know that there's something. It's not a picture, but it's like this, like, giant aura of audio, and you just know, like, when you hear something, this is not good. It, like, it's so interesting for me to totally. think about. It was kind of like how we were talking about that one week, about that one the one autistic guy who pictured all the numbers as shapes, and he could sh- craft the shapes, right? Very interesting. It's just, there's just different ways your b- brain perceives things, sure, and, man. like, to wonder what it, what the brain, what kind of things are firing in his brain to play blind like that, but that is super cool. Yeah, I just thought that was that was a feel good story for sure, for sure. Uh, some NRS game was specifically designed for this. I now recall, was it MK Nine or Injustice One or something? But they put out a sound patch, oh, and yeah. the sound patch was very detailed in terms of mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I remember not where that. they were, yeah. with sound cues, when they did things, and where, and all sorts of stuff. There was very. They designed it for that, so yeah, exactly. So I didn't know SF Five did it. It's very, very, very cool to see yeah, that. Yeah, very, yeah. Very cool. I mean, most fighting games have done that because I've always, I've, I've played fighting games before on bad systems where the speaker's dead on one side. Yeah. And so when the character jumps over there, you can't hear him anymore. And also, also because you know what, I like when I did video editing, I had a lot of right left channel stuff when I was doing that, so I was always aware that they mm-hmm. did these kind of things. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. But uh, oh, yeah. but he also says I guess he wasn't blind at a young age. He he went blind at a young age due to cancer. So right. he has some semblance of what visual. But like I, after I that many years, yeah. you that's, know. That's what I wonder about. I wonder yeah. how well that's retained. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Any case, very very interesting stuff, and the event overall seemed very cool. Nice job on the commentary. Taryn and uh, Damascus were up there. I right. thought they did a good job. Dude, there was the one time at PAX East that Kayane was playing Soul Calibur Four on the Mad Cats booth, not looking at the screen. Yeah, and she was... Sh- and she beat, like, everybody. Like, I don't think anybody beat her. Did she just have, like, some character that just has, just, like, Astro? I, I don't, I don't know. know. Like, she just had, like, some understanding of it. So it's really interesting. Sick. Really interesting. Uh, all right, thanks, Black Hawk. All right, yeah, you want to take a break? Shout out to Black Hawk. Yes, when we come back, you can see I've already changed it. Wow, Boom, NRS. Moved backwards. Yeah, exactly. Get, get back there. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. 
We will be right back, guys, with some invitational discussion. Be right back. You know, I should just click the button earlier next time. Yeah, that makes sense. Welcome back. James, what do you think about the intersection of invitationals and open tournaments? So, uh, I'm assuming the reason why you bring this up is because one Ryan Ramirez, yeah. aka F Champ, brought this up on Twitter and said that he wants more invitationals after being at E League. That he enjoyed E League, he had such a great time. He felt like they were treated well there. They definitely got the red carpet treatment from everybody. I forgot who it was. They even like showed a picture of like the the guy at the airport to drive them with the sign. That's right. You know, that was Justin. Yeah. yeah. So like, um, the guy was like, "I'll carry your luggage for you" and stuff like that. So you know, like, and so F Champ was just like, "I want more invitationals, bra." And then some people started talking about like. This is kind of like the path that seems like it's just going to go. It's just going to become mostly invitationals and the open tournament area is going to disappear. And FJAP's like, I'm not saying get rid of open tournaments. Yeah. I want it 50-50, you know, kind of a thing like that. But there's definitely a concern because those open tournaments are where people make the name for themselves. Sure. That's the true nature of this sport of this esport is the competitive aspect of it and the fighting game community kind of prides itself on that kind of aspect of that open tournament kind of situation. Ooh. I, I held I held it in after hearing sport and then esport and I just I, yeah, it, I just couldn't I, I know. Couldn't do it. I know. Couldn't do it, James. I, I almost was there. <laughs> anyway. I'm I I don't want it to be fifty fifty. I would prefer it to be more opens than invitationals. However, again, so again, there's two ways I, I look at it, right? Poker. Poker is definitely very fighting game where the, the, the good stars become kind of celebrities and they get asked to go to invitationals. You have those shows like Poker After Dark, World Poker Tour, all these different things. They always invite like the good players and whatever like that or... Most of the time, the good players are the ones who can afford to go in, right? So because it's used to buy ins usually like ridiculous yeah. amount of money and stuff like that. But then there's also tennis, right? Tennis is like nothing but open tournaments, and there's a couple of invitation yeah. and stuff, and it's less. Yeah. I would rather go the tennis route because to me, I feel like fighting games are about that competition. It's always about about that open format, and yep. again. You don't get to make a name for yourself by winning nothing but invitationals, in my opinion. Yes, the invitationals are hype because it's always the players that you want to see, et cetera, et cetera. But I want to see more players. I want to see players who will become the players to see. You know what I mean? And I don't want somebody who is popular stop practicing and he just keeps getting invited to invitationals because he's popular and just like half-asses his way through matches. Totally. So uh, I'm definitely more pro on the um, on the uh, open format, and I hope it stays. So someone in the chat typed 90-10. I don't know if it's 90-10. Like maybe A515 or something like that. Maybe even 80-20. I understand the appeal of invitationals. Yeah. And I, and I understand that a lot of these pro players are just like, they travel everywhere. They work super hard. Look what the CPD has done to some of these guys. Like, literally, they're just like... I mean, like, if you saw PR Rogs travel that one year, Gamer Beast travel the other year, and, like, last year everyone's traveled, it is literally Street Fighter 2. <laughs> Japan! <laughs> Brazil! <laughs> USA! <laughs> Russia! You know, like, it, it's literally what they're doing. And so I can see why being able to go to an invitation where they're like, let me fed, do you want some grapes? You know, <laughs> like, like I can totally get why yeah. that's very, very it nice. It, it's it's uh, not just nice for them. I mean, you, it's nice. Right. USSR, anyways, go ahead. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's also nice for the organizers. Yeah. Because it's easier to plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's, it can be less money yes. to throw an event. Um, even though, even if you're bringing in players... You don't have to rent, like, a giant warehouse. Right. Like, you don't have to get, like, a giant Evo ballroom. Right. And sorry to cut you off, but, like, you remember when we did uh, Aftershock? Yeah. Like, Seglia was just super happy because we knew all the competitors and you could put together pieces. It's like an easier production. Right. You know, you can make Yeah, you can put up. Yeah, yeah, right. You can put very interesting things together. Think about what E-League just did where they mm -hmm. had interviews and there's... Uh, uh, not just interviews, but there were like uh, 
looks at the players and they have Huff little pieces. Yeah, essentially. that's a good yeah, way yeah, to put yeah. it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, stuff like that. All those things you can make if it's an invitational. Mm-hmm. And if you're somebody watching at home, you get to see somebody you like. You know, it's there's mm-hmm. not. It's not just for the players. But that said, uh, uh, equally as good for. Well, I feel as just somebody who watches fighting games, and I'm not at something, I'm watching. It's like mm-hmm, I'm in the stream mm-hmm. watching. Well, usually on slash pop out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, anyway, I'm usually watching. Um, I like to see pools. I want to see not just like what the people I know are doing. I want to see people who I might not know. Mm-hmm. You know, or I, want, I might see, think about what just happened at final round. I was only there for a day, but in like one commentary block, Knuckle almost lost, and... Somebody almost Momochi lost. Momochi almost, Momochi almost lost. Lost. It was like yeah. very uh-huh, close. Uh-huh. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. And I would think, I, I think I would be bored if it was Knuckle Dew versus Tokido or five other people every week. <laughs> yes. I think that way I just I would stop caring. I yeah. Uh-huh. I like those guys a lot, but I mean, come on. I want to see other things too. So um, e- even on top of the things that you mentioned, I like, you know, very important, I think, for FGC culture mm-hmm. to have opens. Uh, uh even on top of that, I want to have opens because there are. I, I would get bored by invitationals. Mm-hmm. I like to have new people playing. I want to have new people who I can see, and you know, it's important to have a spot where you can get new players on those big screens. You know, where those big moments. Um, the dude who uh, almost beat Momochi, Brian F. Yeah. He's amazing. He's he amazing. He just tech won. Uh, yeah. He just won Chicago's Red the, Bull thing. Oh, did he? Oh, like, okay, make, okay, you know, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, keep an eye on that guy. But, like, I wouldn't have known that necessarily. Yeah, I think I've seen some tech stuff, but, like, oh, yeah, I wouldn't really have known tech. about that side of it if not for... Yeah, yeah, of course. against Momoji, so... Because a lot of people were like, oh, he's just a tech guy. They don't know he's, like, the best power rog on, like, one of the best power rogs on CFN and stuff like that, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. so... Stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, it's, just to reiterate, I do think it's important to keep opens in there for mm-hmm. our culture and I think that a big part of why for example Monte Cristo was talking about how he likes to watch the FGC mm-hmm. I feel like a big part of that is related to that culture of right. openness anybody anybody can take on anybody else it's all in the game there's no there are very few gods right yeah 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 exactly maybe exactly. Daigo I don't know if that's mm-hmm. true anymore but like Dude, there's Di- very few Daigo at final round was just walking around in circles mm-hmm. and like he like there was one point in time where he just looked like a lost puppy like he was just kind of walking around like kind of looking around no one's harassing him and I, I remember at evo even he was in the stands watching and he was just sitting in a corner by himself like it's it's not like that the culture is not about this kind of worship Agreed. kind of thing and you know that's the other thing that i'm afraid of too like i'm not gonna lie like i'm worried that if it's all invitationals that some of those top players might get a little soft Ooh. That it might get to that point where like, they're just like they want VIP rooms and stuff like yes. that, you know? Oh, like that yeah. kind of soft. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, uh-huh. I thought I, I, there's probably some truth in that. But on top of that, what if they only play against like ten other people for a year, right? And then, and then uh-huh. it's like, all right, time for the open, and like Joe Schmo, meanwhile, has been like killing the open circuit, and like <laughs> now he gets to play against whoever for the first time, and that other guy's only played against ten people. He's yeah. that you know. Uh-huh. What if he's soft in game too? Because like I mean so, like probably not, but know, I don't want to take the risk. If top players are used to going to events and having people fix meals for them and like pick them up with limousines oh and everything like that, are they just gonna? Is that what they kind of want? You know, I mean, uh, here, for me, if the for in order for invitationals to work well alongside uh, open tournaments, is I like what South by Southwest did. I like what E League did in that they have unique formats. Yeah. I like the idea of the unique formats. If they can come up with like some interesting formats, I think that works out really well. I think that would work out okay. really well. Like I wouldn't want to see an invitational that's just straight up bracket bracket. I mean, like something like Red Bull Kumite kind of does that, but like I would like to see it a, a more interesting. Like I like the yeah. pools kind of thing. I like that concept because then it you get more matches out of those players. It's Agreed. not like one guy is just going to go 0 and 2 and they're gone, right? Yeah. Like even if you go 0 and 7, you got to see them play 7 times, right? right? Like Agreed. I, think I that's really kind like of that interesting. Too. So you know, not not to shout down Red Bull Kumite or anything like that. I'm sure know, it'll be a good like, event. I I'm, I just I think coming up with different formats makes it more interesting. So I'm definitely with you, and and I don't want shout outs to Grim XD. I don't want uh, to be sectioned off. You know, I don't I don't need a fancy hotel room. I don't want mm-hmm. like 
be weird. Like, I'd feel weird about some guy picking me up from the airport and insisting me carry, carry my luggage. No, man, it's cool. I mean, I kind of make it Just a point a... whenever we're on break from commentary that I walk around. Yes. And, and so when we were at South By, right, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there was a, like, back room, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And players were practicing back there. But there was also a stream, and there were comfy chairs, and we could have just hung out there in the back room and just watched things mm-hmm. without any of the plebs to bother us. But <laughs> we came outside. Stupid. We even they gave us food back there, and we took the food out. Esports we food. Ate it, we ate it on the chair, and people would come up to us and say hi to yeah, us. Yeah, we just chatted like and stuff. And like, I feel like that that's part of the FDC culture. Yeah. And I don't want to lose that kind of thing. And I think that's important to maintain that kind of thing. So. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So. It's just video games, folks. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, agreed. They're just, just some people playing. It's just game. Why you have to be mad? What is that from? Uh, Ilya Brzgalov, a goalie in the NHL. Oh, really? There's a classic video. <laughs> of, I forget even what the situation is now, but uh, he has this thick Russian accent. Okay, okay. And uh, somebody's pissed at him in the game, you know, and right. somebody was fighting, whatever, and. Uh, and that, that was his interview. Somebody was interviewing, like, hey, what do you think about this? And he was just like, it's just game. Why you have to be mad? <laughs> That's awesome. Sick. That's the deal. That's awesome. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, oops, I forgot to change the highlight here. It's actually bad for me to forget to change the highlight because that actually helps me edit these videos a Ooh, lot easier. I'll tell you that right now. Ah, it's only game. It's only game. Why you have to be mad? Right, way in the back of the throat there. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Of course, and you have to eliminate all buzz and A's. There's no needs sentences. for articles yep. in Russian. You don't like you don't like the word pleb? Pleb not cool enough? Pleb. Is pleb, pleb weird? Peons. The peons. Peons, yeah. Uh, okay. Alrighty, well. That's kind of how I feel about that invitation. Okay. Then let's talk about this NRC DLC thing. Yeah, yeah, so there's a conversation on uh, Twitter today among many members of the NetherRealm community, MK Injustice mm-hmm. community. Tell me the backstory, because I am actually For not sure. as aware of this. So it just uh, started today. I'm not sure why in particular today. Okay. But Pig of the Hut uh, put out a poll that was basically, would you like to ban characters as they are released for DLC? Not permanently, but some period of time. Right. Right. Historically, NRS games have had very polarizing DLC. Nice. Ass. Or super good. Right. Martian Manhunter, Tanya, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Alien. Of, yeah, Alien. A lot of people thought Injustice, uh, Scorpion and Injustice. I don't know if that was true necessarily. Mm-hmm. But in any case, a lot of people were mad about it. It's happened many times. Mm-hmm. Many, many times. Uh, and in a bunch of NRS games, until like the final patch comes out, like right now, the characters who are DLC are not like better right. they're, like, they ended up uh, 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 good uh, uh, uh. but that takes a while and, and for a long time they are like the best mm-hmm. yeah CEO had like five Tanyas in the yep. top eight and they patched it before Ugh. Evo so they wouldn't have five Tanyas at Evo right so they literally patched it in the two weeks between CEO and Evo yeah so uh, yeah should they be disallowed for a period of time and I think it's a it's a good question because it's not something that you can just apply other games logic to Mm -hmm. Uh, when other games come out with new characters they tend to be better balanced internally or they're made they make sure that the characters are not crazy strong Mm -hmm. that's what street fighter 5 is doing right but it's not just street fighter 5 a lot of other games in the past have done that same thing not go crazy with a new character that's the thing that's the question right there is that does nrs have other motives because in a non-esports environment it's actually a good strategy to release characters that are super powerful in patches. Because if you're getting blown up by them, you're going to be like, well, damn it, I want to use this character too. So you end up buying the character, right? I mean, this is a this is an, an actual strategy. This is not like, uh, not a conspiracy theory. This for is sure. something that, that people have done in the past for less competitive games. Given that NRS knows that 95% of the Mortal Kombat audience has no idea about tournaments or anything about esports. Yeah. Like, would they care to rock that esports boat for the few weeks before the next patch? Here's the thing, though. Right? It's not the only esports thing that does it, because Riot does it, too, for League of Legends. To be fair, 
I have basically checked out of that scene entirely. <laughs> so has that been happening over the last year? Maybe not. You tell me. But right. certainly before that, it happened a lot. I remember every time a new dude came out who was obviously strong for right. like a uh-huh, while. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, it happened too consistently to be an accident. And I really feel like that's part of it I got up in, uh, in NRS games too. <laughs> Just like the chat, they're like, I don't think NRS does anything intentionally. It's 100% not NRS's strategy. <laughs> I don't think they're smart enough to do that. I, I wish I could uh, disagree Dude, with you. I, I really But do. here's the thing, right? I, one, I wish I could disagree with you. But then also, look, whatever Ed Boone's been doing this whole entire time, as much as you want to talk smack about his decisions, his games sell millions of copies, okay? So, look, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of intention with that. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I would not be surprised either. Uh, in any case, I think I agree with the longer ban okay. with those characters for a couple of reasons. One is that it sucks as the player to show up and you have, you practice for, say, six months. Last week, Dude X dropped and Dude X is ridiculous and you don't know the matchup yet. Right, uh-huh. But one, but people learned three things about Dude X that are ridiculous, because that's definitely going to happen, mark my words, because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it definitely has happened. And then they just stomp you, because it's, what do you do about pre-patch Tanya? You know what I mean? Like, they patched her a couple of times, and she was still top tier. Uh-huh. Pre-patch, she was crazy. Uh, so that is definitely going to happen, and it sucks for the players. Yes. Right? So it sucks to travel to an event, you spend money, even if you're not the kind of player who thinks that you're going to win some tournament, you have spent money to go, and it feels bad to get asked out by this OP character. Right. Uh Uh-huh. And, like, a lot of people were talking about uh, Colleen at Final Round and stuff like that. We didn't see any Colleens, because she's just, she's not designed in a way that she was just like, blam! Right. Right. (laughs) And you die. Which game was it that, it was uh, was, uh, KI, where someone had, like, the jump age of death, wasn't it? Mm, Was it a... Idol. It was idle, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus exactly. 100,000. Exactly. <laughs> they changed that. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so then there's so the, there's the player side. It also sucks to watch. Mm-hmm. I don't want to mm-hmm. see another five Tanyas in top eight. That was crappy. I don't want to see it, everybody playing Alien. Mm-hmm. That was boring. Uh, I want to see variety. So I don't, I don't want to yeah. have that happen. CEO Tanya, 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 Tanya was one of the worst things that have happened to that Boom. game. I remember that. Because I remember when it got to that point, I was just... Like, I was just, like, dumbfounded. Because, I mean, I was playing Tanya, remember? I and I was like, that. I want to see how this character plays. Dragon Naginata, so interesting! Well, it was. It was interesting, but you never saw it, because uh, you can do the other things with the teleporting and the records. So. Yeah, exactly. You never saw it. So, I was so sad, dude. Yeah, I was yeah. so sad. But the question is, how long? What's the time Well, Well, b- before that, there's, there's a third reason that I want to ban them. Okay. I mean, that is to... Just let NRS know in advance that if the strategy that we were talking about is what's happening, we're screw that. <laughs> screw that. We're not going to be advertisers for you. You're on to you. Yeah. I mean, no, really, though. I, I don't want... It's that old Chinese guy in those old kung fu movies. We're on to you. <laughs> I just don't want to advertise for that. And and I feel weird about that. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't want players to win or lose based on whether, like, the new character is good. It's stupid. Right. But on top of that, even if it is advertising, it looks bad. Right. For uh-huh, their game. Uh-huh. It, it doesn't does. look it does. good. Yes. So there are all these reasons that I think I would prefer the ban. How long? I don't know. Gut says wait for a patch. Because it's Ooh. definitely going to happen. So you would wait till the next Screw patch. Screw you, character. Like, unless, unless it's like Jason Ooh. when he dropped and he was like clearly not that good. Okay. But yeah, screw that. Like, I was even thinking just, like, a month just to evaluate the character or something like that. The problem... So, yeah, that is definitely time. However, would a month have been enough for Tanya not to have been strong? No. Definitely not. Right, right, right. She was obviously good. But now everybody's ready, and they might have actually sat down and developed the anti-Tanya tech. Typically, I think that's true. Typically, I I agree that people do that and that that's a thing in games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. However... I'm not sure about that when it comes to NRS games. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not sure that the community would do that, and I'm not sure that the games, in terms of how the DLC comes out, are really susceptible to that. Yeah. There yeah. are certainly some instances. I didn't think Injustice Scorpion was that crazy. Yeah. Uh, for uh, for example, uh, he had a lot of teleport side to side things. 
people thought that was too hard to block because it's a left-right block game. Mm -hmm. It's not the block button, which is what you're used to if you're an NRS player. So they were very, they didn't like the side to side a lot. Mm -hmm. if, if people coming from Marvel and whatnot, it was like, it, it was no big Right, game. exactly. I remember like, not, where I was playing a lot of Marvel at the time and I was right. like, <laughs> like who the, cares the stuff that you have to block and yeah. it's funny because like I'm terrible at it too because I'm not used to it. that's why when I play Marvel I die to every character as a teleport character because mm. I'm never thinking about having to switch sides with yeah. the other guys across the screen <laughs> yeah. like I'm just never just like, thought about right, it alright I get to control the stage now yeah okay. and then like do set assist, my slow stuff dude assist jumps out and he's about to shoot me with this beam and I'm like whatever I'll just block and then zoom, teleport pff, dead I was like Right, I'm playing Marvel, dude. I was never yeah. that good at that game. Anyway, uh. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, and you didn't even have to block score if you just held straight down. He whiffed, and you blew him up, right? right? So when you're um, on the screen, I think there was something like that. Or you would block him because neutral down was yeah. Blocking. I don't think it was an overhead, but I yeah. honestly I don't. Neutral recall. down was blocking. Yeah, so, it's, yeah it yeah. still isn't the new one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, so at what point do I think a character is strong, but in a good place can a dlc character just never be top tier no of course i i think the dlc characters can be top tier it's it's more that i think that nrs has too strong of a history of releasing obviously the best characters as dlc right. uh it's uh, dude because martian like, manhunter was super good when he came out oh right? yeah he was, he was one of the best for sure yeah um, i mean batgirl, batgirl was amazing yeah. uh who else is dlc in that came out well i remember. mean like some of them were ass lobo was just like lobo turned out not to be that bad oh really but he oh, wasn't okay. top tier for sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh in any case it's not always true but i feel like it is often the case and mm -hmm. i just tired of it yeah i'm tired I of it understand. i feel like i feel like they are a different story than other game yeah. does zod oh, zod. zod was super good zod. let me shoot you with laser beams and push you across the screen he was like Anna Karras in a game where like you didn't have free guard reversals. You know? <laughs> yeah. God. Oh yeah, Scorpion was uh, was one of the. We were just talking about him. He was DLC yeah. in that game. Um, Zatanna was also DLC. I played her. She was definitely not OP, but she was fun. Okay. Anyway, not always obviously, but I feel like they do it much more frequently than other game devs, and so I would give their DLC more time. Certainly at a minimum, if you give some other games two weeks, it's got to be a month or something for right. uh, for uh, just uh, to make sure. Okay. But, I mean, the fact that it comes from Pig of the Hut, and I know Pig of the Hut is also a very logical, very... No? Okay. You uh, see, I, you know, where... Okay, well, never mind. Let's talk, Let's go to a break. So, and we'll sometimes, go. sometimes, yes, for sure. I think he's a real, he's a real cool guy <laughs> offline. There are sometimes on the internet where he can Whoops. let things get the best Sorry. of him. No, no, totally. Because... <laughs> If you if you've only talked with him in real life, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. very nice guy, uh -huh, uh -huh. quite reasonable. As many people in the NRS community do, the internet you, you, is you hit, you hit that yeah, testyourmite okay. com and it's okay. a little bit of a different okay. story. Okay. <laughs> oh, I like the guy a lot. He's I like him overall very much. Right. The internet. Okay, cool. Uh, do you want to take a break? When we come back, we can just get through the rest of the community and all that other stuff. All right. Be right back, guys. We'll be right back. I clicked it early, too. I swear I clicked it early. Hey, hey, hey. Yo. Ooh, that was too loud. Sorry, guys. Wow. Yeah. And I started out strong, too. Yeah, Bummer. I uh, First off. No, I have not met Tool Assisted. Tool Assisted had a thing, uh, uh, basically like a GoFundMe, where if she got enough donations, then she'd uh, make training mode in the patch, in the uh, PC patch, mm -hmm. and also get to meet me in expectation that uh, she gets sued. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, got it, got it. I don't it, think that it, happened, it. though. Okay. So anyway, next time, lady. Okay. Sorry. All right, <clears throat> so let's talk about all this. Uh... <laughs> Everyone's like, she. Oh man. Well, I mean, yes. Fact. Yes. So okay. as far as I know. Mm hmm Well, I've met Desk in person, okay. So I do know Desk is an actual human being. And there are videos of him on YouTube playing bass guitar and he is ridiculous. So Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the thing about Tool Assisted is that uh she refuses to have any Humanity, it's like a somebody playing a bot online or whatever, whatever the, sh the shtick is, right? But in order to try to find out who it was, I tried to, to say that, you know, I would call her a she unless... I don't know what I did now. No, you're just was, trying to bug the person. Trying to, to bug like, the yeah, person. Uh -huh, uh -huh. 
And uh, that was the closest that she ever got to breaking that yeah, I've seen uh-huh, in any uh-huh. case. So I just thought, well, it's, if it's an AI, it's male or female is equally as valid, right? right? So right. just <laughs> go with the she. Oh, man. Okay. All righty, let's well, do it. let's talk about this. So uh, tomorrow on uh, the Watchtower, Ooh. they are going yeah. to show off new characters that were announced. They had that bad guy thing. Where they showed Bane, which yes. I'm sure you're happy. Although he looks much like a svelte kind of guy. Yeah, I think it was yeah. cool. Uh, he looks more like in tune with the comics now. Yes. Yeah. Well, the original comics, yes. right? So uh, Bane, Captain Cold was in there. Yeah. He always looks like Iceman to me. I don't know anything that. about him. He was in the Justice League cartoon. Come on, I'm sure you watched that all I guess the time. Not. No, I mean the original. No. Super, super, the Super Friends. Like he was. He's literally the guy who looks like an Eskimo. Is he a villain? Yeah, he's one of Flash's villains, yeah. And then in the huh. show, he's also, in the Flash show, like, he's played by the guy from Prison Break, and people like him, and I think the character is really stupid. But well, like, does he, he just has a gun, and he He has a freezes. gun that freezes things, right. So I just don't know how he fights the Flash. Like, I just feel like that's, like, literally impossible to fight that the That seems like it should not be doable. Uh, who but is- the Flash is also going to get shown off. Yes, the Flash is going to oh, get shown off, but and- they also announced the Scarecrow... How sick does Scarecrow look? Scarecrow? You got to admit. Okay, so that I was about to say, looks who, so and sick. who was the last bad guy? They showed four bad guys. There was one more. It was Black Adam, right? Mm, they did it show was Black, Black Adam. Adam, right? So Scarecrow is new, Captain Cold is new, and Bane is looks reworked a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I will admit. Because we've been complaining about Cheetah and Firestorm. Now that I think about it, Firestorm looks just like Fireman and Captain Cold looks just like Iceman. That's really funny. Didn't we talk about Fireman yeah, looking uh, exactly like the dude? Yeah, uh, and now that I think about it, Captain Cold looks just like Iceman. That's really funny. But, you know, we've been making fun of those characters and I will say Scarecrow looks pretty sick. He actually, I think, looks really... Oh, the trailer had Gorilla Grodd. That's what But they was. have also showed Black Yeah, Adam. yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah Gorilla Grodd also, that's for sure. Right, for that's sure. right, yeah. Um, dude, I just want to talk about how cool I think Scarecrow looks. looks. But it's interesting because, you know, he fights with a chain. Like, I would have expected yeah. a lot more weird psychedelic kind of, like... I feel like that like mind, mind-bendy kind of things in there. I mean, you say that. You say that. But I this do. is NRS we're talking about. Well, so NRS, so graphically, it's whatever it is, it's not going to look that cool. But if it's in there. But I really feel like just because they always have weird game mechanics. I just, like, it's like for- I feel like they have to have some funky fear gas kind of stuff. Like, don't you think it'd be strange if they didn't? I, I hope they do, but I mean, like, I just, like, Flash, I just thought was, like, super uninteresting, right? Like, yeah, Flash was not that breaking, interesting. breaking, he runs at the same speed. I, to the no, same I know, screen. I know, but... Like, Flash... They, they do have funky character Like, could you options. imagine if Flash, like, had a, a go-back-in-time mechanic that he could, like, reset the, the match a little bit, like, go back and then, like... Like he like his super was like reset the reset yeah. time. I, I don't know. I just felt like Flash. They could have did. Flash was the character I was so hyped for in the original Injustice, and when he came out, I was just like. He was a boring character. I I agree with you. Some people like him, but I thought he was quite boring. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but having said that, Scarecrow does look cool, and I can't wait to see what he does. And hopefully, they come up with a lot of creative things for him. Yeah, I I, I feel like. Uh, they they make the characters who are like the popular ones boring. That's how I kind of feel. <laughs> like if you think about Superman, boring as could be. Batman, you know the bats are interesting, I guess, but it's like whatever. Right. Nothing like inspired. Yeah. And same with Flash. Like all the all the like popular characters, I thought were just like. Neh. But then when once you got down to the weirdos, right? They could do they do weird stuff, and yeah. those that so that's what I'm expecting for Scarecrow. Right. Yeah, see, I'm worried that that's what it's gonna. It's just gonna be gas that's just gonna make them go, oh, oh, and then you can just rub and beat them up like, you dude, know, like you might be right. I hope not. NRS. I mean, that's what someone in the chat said. You think basically. it's like basically borracho fart? Yeah, a borracho <laughs> fart. Yeah, All right. or or Meaty farts. Quanti, you know, just right? Like, you just know, like trance. you hit them and they're just like, oh, oh, and then you beat them up again and stuff like that. You might like, be right. I just I, the hardest part not. about it is, like, he would be a perfect online character. Like, cause you could just, you could screw up the other person's screen with all sorts of craziness. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then have yours be normal, but it just wouldn't work offline. So, I, you know, it, 
I, I understand There's where... There's so many the, cool potential. I yeah, guess. They, I, I totally understand where they have... I mean, it's where, like, the Rising Thunder would have been cool. Remember how Rising Thunder had the, the invisibility mode where you could see yourself, but the opponent couldn't yes. see you? Like, Rising Thunder... Like, if, if Scarecrow was in Rising Thunder, okay. There we go. Like, Scarecrow could grow really large, or the screen oh, could warp. Very interesting. And, like, things could... Weird things get... Like, your moves won't look like they hit in the right direction. You know, like, weird mm. things could happen. Like, you know, like... It would be really interesting. Like I hear you. That would yeah. be very cool. Anyway, we'll see what they do. So okay. tomorrow is going to be which? Bane and Flash and one other? I am the Flash. Uh, sorry. Uh, it was... Who was third? Uh, Captain Cold. Right. Captain Right. By the way, somebody in chat corrected me saying that he shoots cold. Captain Cold Not that he cold. has a freeze gun. He shoots cold. I thought he had a freeze gun. It's a it's a cold shooter. I don't know. I don't know, James. I don't know if any of this is right. <laughs> it's, it's too bad we don't have is a person a who's really into comics on our team. If only on the Ultra Chen staff, you know, and everything. Uh, interesting stuff. So KOF just recently announced the final DLC character. Yeah. Which was Rock. The first time he's gonna show up officially. In a KOF game. Yeah, that's that was, right. It's not the weird 3D maximum impact game. And uh, I think that's cool. It is cool. I know a lot of people were mad about it, but... Uh, Are they? I saw some people were mad about it just because it was just that whole thing, like, there's... there's It's just like when Armika came out, and everyone's like, oh my god, Ar I'm so hyped for Armika. And you're just like, none of you have ever touched Armika in your life. You have no idea who she is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's a lot of people with Rock. Because, like... Huh. All those people who love rock, they never played Garo Mark the Wolf. Let's be real. Maybe so. They Maybe they played. just played CBS too. Yeah, yeah, that's what a lot of people are saying. Like the only if you're a fan of rock, it's probably because Could of be. CBS too. Yeah, yeah, uh huh. But uh, a lot of a people game. are definitely hype about that. And um, I mean, I know like Olaf is super sad because he really wants Blue Mary because you know. He's, yeah, he's a big Blue Mary fan. Yeah, but. Uh, uh, I think it's cool, but, like, look, I'm expecting more characters. I'm sure they're not going to stop at this point in time, right? They have some new stages, they have some new characters, and, in fact, I saw something mentioned that they're going to do this big old patch, because, like, the last patch said, like, they showed the note, like, they showed summaries of them, like, the, and it was, like, minor adjustments to characters, and then, like, in this next patch that's coming out, I don't, I don't remember when, I, I don't know if I have the information, but it was, like, major adjustments to, like, characters and things like that, so... Seems like they're doing a good job trying That's to keep great. up with the game and everything. So you know, and, and what's really cool too is that the King of Fighters community is really trying to step up their game as well. Mm. So a lot of uh, people in different communities have done good things. The Marvel community has been amazing. The Skullgirls community has always been For amazing. Sure. Killer Instinct has been amazing. Yes. Even Vampire Savior, yes. you know, Super Turbo. Sure. And KOF, their community put out a giant survey that was like. Answer these questions. Here, uh, give us your demographics. Why don't you play the game? What is it you don't mm -hmm. like? And they actually just finished compiling the data, oh, like, literally that? today. So if you actually go to uh, uh, showrukin.com and look for, uh, just do a search for King of Fighters 14 um, survey. Just look that up on the search, and you should be able to find it. You can go there and see the results. Uh, a guy named Reiki underscore Kito. You can also find this on his Twitter, which is. At R E I K I underscore K I T O. Right. Actually, why am I doing this? I can show you it on the screen. Yeah. Uh, you can go here to follow this guy, James Alderson. Um, James Alderson. Uh, right there. Okay. So right. he says, We're done. 25 pages long analysis on awesome. this things here. That's, so, I want to check that out. So yeah, you could definitely look for this, read up on it, and see what a lot of people had to say about that. So again, you can see it right there, Reiki Kito. Very, so very cool. Give him a follow there. Or Respect just, for just that. Yeah, check that out and see what he has to say about that. But yeah, very, very, very cool stuff. Well, personally, the reason that I don't play KOF 14 is because my favorite character is not in it from um, Garo, uh, Griffin Mask. He's a oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. there's there's no there's no Tzok in KOF fourteen, unfortunately. Yeah, that's so. really unfortunate. Yeah, and I mean, it would oh, be, well. even if they put like another character that played kind of like no, him, would not be, good enough. 
No, I mean, it's interesting because I remember there was, when people were starting to ask about this, there, when they first had the survey, it was like, why don't you play KOF? I retweeted it for them. And a lot of people responded to me. I would say that the number one answer that I got was, it's not on PC. I think that's well, a big part of it for me, too. Right. I haven't turned on my PS4 in a while. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. No, honestly, when I was playing 14, which I only did for a couple weeks, to be frank, I was not with T-Zog. Okay. Or whatever, King of Dinosaurs. Right. Uh, also news is that, uh, where is it? Guilty Gear Rev 2 has officially launched in the Japanese arcades. Okay. People have been playing it. People have been streaming it now. So there's a lot of footage of Biken, a lot of mm-hmm. footage of Answer out there. Answer looks super interesting. He looks like... Like, I can't tell what he does. I didn't get a chance to watch. Kugi did a big, giant analysis on Answers gameplay. Yeah, I, I actually watched a bunch of that. Oh, did you? I did. So, I mean, it looks like he's kind of like Bang Shishigami, where he can, like, plant yeah. things, and then they, the little flags that let him dash around and stuff Yeah, like that, 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 is, right? that is how it seems. Okay. Um, except it doesn't seem to be, a like, a resource. It's just, like, you get to do it. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but mm-hmm. it doesn't seem like there's nails that you just, like, you'll run out of. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, he has that. He had some crazy... Side to side mix ups with that yeah. movement, command grab in there. He seems like a really fun character. Yeah, he looks pretty sick. Yeah. I mean, it, it, uh, just he's a ninja. I felt very Bang Shishigami to me from what yeah. I had seen, but Biken looks crazy. Mm-hmm. And, oh, dude, I saw she has. I, I don't. They don't look like dragons anymore, but her jump dust was always this dragon cannon. Right. And yeah. She has her dragon cannon loops, and I, saw I that. used to spend hours just like learning those combos, and like I saw them, and I just like got super excited again. So. Can't wait to play with that and, you know, have a minor, minorly crappy bike in, but, you know, like, it'll be yeah, fun. That's cool. It'll be fun. Uh, yeah, that's right. King of Fighters 14 also announced that they had a bunch of new uh, stages as well. Oh, very well. nice. Uh, let me see here. And speaking of new stages, they announced that uh, in Street Fighter Five a new stage is coming out. It's a recreation of Bison's original stage. Is this real? Because this came out. On the first. Yeah, well, there was a video of, like, I, I just don't feel like that they would go that hard to make this GIF and, like, have it be fake. Yeah? Here, let me play the GIF for you guys here. I think sure, this get is it real. up there. Give it a go. I'm pretty sure that's real. All right, let's do this here. Go back here. Exploit cool these. gilded background. What's that? On that GIF. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, Bison about to land on the ground. So I mean, they have this. They have this beginning. Like I just can't imagine that they would go this far to render all this stuff in the background for uh, for an April Fools. Maybe. And plus another thing too is a, a lot of these SRK articles have been marked as April Fools, and this one has not been marked oh. as April Fools. So okay. I believe this is a real thing. I believe it's a real thing. So. We'll see. But, uh, also, I mean, yeah, cool. So, uh, in terms of upcoming events, I wanted to talk about this. I think this just went up, but uh, Tony, Tony Cannon of Evo, uh, on the Evo staff just put up a Reddit article uh, on reddit.com r Street Fighter about this huge thing saying, here's all the problems of Evo last year, here's oh. how we're addressing them. And they even have a floor plan put out over there. They said every game is getting their own section, their Ooh. own big screen, their own chairs, their own stage. So there is no point at time in which the game will not have the big screen, basically. And they, they showed it, they said they're doubling the size of the room again. So it's like twice, and like literally they put a little icon of an SUV on the map to show you how big an SUV would be on the map. What? And it is just, just the dinkiest little thing. And they were like addressing like, this is what a lot of people didn't like. They hated the walk. Well, we're all in Mandalay Bay now. You don't have to walk anywhere. We're going to wow. make sure you have the stream time and do all this stuff. Like, it looks fantastic. Like, I was super happy with it. But uh, you can actually, yeah, two, 277K uh, it's two, square foot. What? Or something like 277,000 square feet. No, no, it can't be, be 277,000. Come on, Toshin. I, I, 
It is. 277,000 square feet. What? That's what it actually says. Two, it, it would have its own dedicated screen and viewing area while it's being played. As well as feeling less cramped. The 80-foot big screen from Evo 2015 will be making the return this year. Okay. You can view a rough uh, tentative venue map. So again, just go to Evo, look out uh, improvements for Evo 2017. You'll find it. You'll find a link to the R Street Fighter thread yeah. where they have the floor plan there. I mean, you know what? That's just, crazy, I'm man. I'm going to bring up this floor plan. I was plan browsing again. the old Reddit earlier today, and I saw this very thread, and I decided, eh, I'm not going to pick it up. <laughs> I'm going to look at it. It's probably You're nothing. like, this can't be interesting. It's probably nothing. Whatever. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. It, this doesn't scale, so that's um, wild, man. Two seventy seven K. Like, if you look at this, this is the floor plan here, right? So this is just, uh, game four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I can. Oh. Uh, let's see. Control scroll wheel. You said. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, there we go. Sick tech. So. There you go. So this is essentially what it looks like here. And uh, so here's game one. So these are the three big games are going to have their own stages over here. These two, these three are going to be shared by other games. So they probably won't be played at the same time. And then there's just going to be this big area probably for the artist alley and everything for the expo and everything like that. And see this yellow box over here? I do. See this yellow box? That's the SUV. That is the real size of the SUV compared to the ballroom. Huh. Wow. That is pretty wild. It's pretty crazy. I mean, I'm I'm pretty excited about that, and it sounds like that they're going to be uh, doing a lot of cool things for that. So that is crazy, man. And That's I, very one impressive. thing that I mean, I hope there are no walls between them. I hope that is all one giant. Yes. Room. I hope that is all one giant. I strongly room. agree. I hope also that there will be a place to play video games casually. Yeah, the expo. Hopefully, they have that. I mean, it's funny. Some people are saying SUVs are really not that big. And I actually kind of agree with that because I always thought about this, that Autobots would just get destroyed by Decepticons because they're like fighter jets. And if they transformed, the robots would be like three times taller than the Autobots. Like Bumblebee, like Bumblebee rolling along or like a Formula he, wasn't One race Wasn't he a small car. one though? I mean, yeah, but like, well, think about like Hound. He was a Jeep. He was a size, he yeah. was a normal size robot. Okay. And when he transformed, he would only be this tall and then like... Starscream would just be like three times taller. He's just more. He just compacts himself in there better. That's all, yeah. right? Yeah, so I mean, there was like, like this a, weird he's thing. Just very with efficient. It. I mean, that's what they also mentioned because, like, Megatron when he transforms into gun, he he's shrank. a gun. He yeah. shrank, right? How efficient? Yeah. Otherwise, he would transform and just be like this gun. Like even Soundwave would do it. So there was this weird shrinking thing, and there was all this whole scientific theory by Transformers fans that they were like shoving oh, matter yeah. into a dark hole oh, or whatever okay. like that. Yeah. That's not a scientific theory. Yeah. <laughs> Any that's, case, uh, that's just a theory. excited about that, but also wanted to mention that uh, judge applications are also open ah. for Evo, and they also said that they're going to do their best to make sure that you know they every game has a dedicated TO for that game. Nice. Because before they had like three or four main guys running around, but now like each game will have their own dedicated TO. Brad. Uh, but you can also uh, apply to be a judge. There's also applications Important for the, role. For the uh, artist alleys and stuff like that. So you definitely want to get in awesome, there. Awesome, man. So. Evo is not that far away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so weird. I feel like it was Evo 2013. Dude, you know, uh, now I forget what the story was. Somebody was just telling me a story about something that had happened at Evo 2013. And I just I was like, yeah, I remember. It was like last year, a couple, couple years ago. Right. Sure enough, it was four years ago. Time. It's a wild one. It's a wild one. <laughs> a couple of other event news. Uh, Autumn Games, of course, who is uh, helping with uh, <laughs> Skullgirls. They are adding a $2,000 pot bonus for Skullgirls at Combo Breaker. Okay. So Combo Breaker has essentially become the big event for... Uh, Skullgirls. Yeah. And uh, they just released the uh, the ranking order. Yeah, they uh, did. Hado, Rick the Hado did. And I'm still so excited that Guilty Gear is number two. That Guilty Gear yeah. is number two behind Street Fighter V. Uh, hmm. I'm just... I wanted to see it, but uh, it's going to take a while. Okay. Fine, uh, also, uh, is this one already done? Let me see what date this was. I just want to make sure... Um, uh, there's no date here. There's no date. Where's the date? Uh, so 
Uh, I just what are you with? It's quite a noise to make. Oh, okay. Uh, looks like it is. Uh, oh, I guess this is. Uh, okay, this one I guess is done then here. Okay, well, uh, they did announce Defend the North is coming back. Defend the North, which is New oh, York's cool. biggest tournament. But interesting time. It's coming back on July 28th through 30th. So that's going to be right after Evo. I wonder if there's going to be any sort of like uh, burnout or anything like that from a lot of players from that. But hopefully it works. Hopefully it works. But it is uh, Defend the North is going to be back July 28th through 30th. This was the event that's gen that's basically put on by Team so Team Pi, right? Uh, City of Brass is the guy who's oh, okay. in charge of this whole entire thing. Uh, gets that all together. So. Uh, this is uh there's going to be a lot of games Street Fighter Five and Justice Two Guilty Gear Exit Rev Two Tekken Seven King of Fighters Fourteen Smash Brothers Wii U UMVC Three Killer Instinct Pokin and For Honor <laughs> and uh, this was also one of the tournaments you remember the Evo staff said that Pokin is going to get pop bonuses at a bunch of different events uh, because they did so well in the donation drive and so a thousand dollars is going to Pokin for pop bonus wow. here rad so there you go. Uh, by the way, I found the CB2017 registration leaderboard update. Doesn't have the numbers, but the order of the games is Street it's Fighter You're 5. talking about Combo Breaker registration? Yes, order. Combo yes, Breaker. Combo Breaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So Street Fighter 5 is on top. Exerd, second place. Injustice 2, third. It's going to be out just before that. Right. Drop, uh -huh, so. uh -huh. Should be uh, fun. That's awesome. So they should ban all the characters because they're all DLC, right? Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> uh, Killer Instinct is fourth. Nice. Tekken Seven after that. Skullgirls after that. Okay. Blaze Blue after that. King of Fighters after that. And then it says Super Turbo has already become our largest retro tournament ever. That's so cool. God. Yeah. Oh, it breaks my heart. The old dude. game. Breaks my heart, dude. What? You can't enter. That we can't be there. Oh, that's right. But you know, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get into that later. That's on. right. We'll get into that. That is later a bummer. On, so. Ugh. Good reason, but bummer. Yeah, okay. Any case, um, this is kind of sad news here, but uh, it is the end of an era. Mm -hmm. Mad Cats has filed for bankruptcy. And yes. I don't think, for people who are kind of new at the FGC, new in the FGC, or just new to video games for some of the younger people, I don't think that they know the path that the company <laughs> of Mad Cats has taken. They started off as the absolute worst peripheral company in the world. God, like they, they were bad news. They were like anytime anyone said Mad Cats, it was like a joke. Yeah. It was like what you bought because you needed something to last you hopefully a week. Yeah. You know? It was what so my fam my family had three brothers. And when we had like a sixty four, we could probably finally play four player games. We bought three real controllers. And then whoever was our jerk ass friend who came over, yeah, you better believe they had the gross Mad Cats. Pack. Oh yeah, it was like oh, yeah. it was like this gross translucent. It was very thick. It was like a very uh -huh. wide controller for some reason. It was just like real weird. Dude, that needs to stop. People need to stop talking about that. They're saying that Mark Man giving away joysticks was bad. Dude, that's all part of the marketing. Marketing, there. yeah. And that's all part of the. Dude, it's trust me, that helped a well, lot for sure. more. A lot yeah. helped a lot more. That and he even talked about it on Reddit as well. He kind of debunked that theory as well. Good. So, um, but, dude, Mad Cats was just the epitome of garbage. I like, it was cheap plastic. It would fall apart. The parts didn't last. When Street Fighter Four came out, Mark Man was the one who was like, "Look, let's try to make nice joysticks, okay? They'll sell." And Mad Cats was like. That's funny. Yeah, that's not what we do. That's here. really funny. And Mark's like, please, let's make these TE sticks. And they're like, they're not going to sell, so we'll come with a compromise. We'll create a bunch of these SE sticks right. out of cheaper parts. Right. And then we'll make a few tournament edition sticks. In fact, they were like numbered at first and stuff like that, I think. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah. Because yeah. like, it was just like, these were special it's Tournament ones. edition only. And those sold out. And people couldn't get them. Yeah. And no one bought the standard edition sticks. Yeah. And Mad Cats was like, wait. If you make good products, you can <laughs> sell them for higher price. What? Way? Oh, what? Oh boy! Pretty much. And then they made TE sticks. Then they supported fighting game tournaments. They sponsored players. They became like the example of what a great like sponsor company yeah. and great making great products and totally. everything like that. 
Mad Cats became like this, like, when you heard Mad Cats, it made you happy. Yeah, It was totally. weird. Like, it uh, was weird. I mean, I know that in talking with other gamers, people who were not really into fighting games, that kind of passed them by. Uh-huh. They didn't really know that Mad Cats had, like, turned the corner. <laughs> and they would still... Like, I remember I brought a buddy over who's not into fighting games, and I had my stick there as a tea uh-huh. stick. Uh-huh. He was like, oh, who makes this? Uh-huh. And I said, Mad Cats, and he thought I was joking. And <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to, like, swear, it was really Mad Cats. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm not kidding. He's like, yeah, come on. Like, it's, he picks it up, and it actually weighs something, you know? <laughs> uh, uh-huh. No, but, but for real, uh, for fighting gamers, it was, it was super important, and it, it was a huge part of, I think, finally sealing the deal on the Switch to console. Obviously, that had uh-huh, happened years uh-huh. earlier. Uh, Evo and other tournaments had gone to console right, from right. arcade. But still, many, many people only played in the arcades where it was available right. or, or didn't play because they didn't have a stick mm-hmm. or, you know, they didn't buy a stick for whatever reason. They were expensive. You could only get custom ones, right? right? Or crappy, whatever the green Sago thing was called. I forget it was Hori something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. I mean... So yeah. it, having, having good quality, not expensive, not inexpensive, but certainly not the $400, $500 that were other sticks, um, uh... And, and and interchangeable yeah. parts. Those are all huge, I think, in getting everybody to just be like, all right, we're yeah. all going to play console. Even arcade gamers had con- had sticks now. Uh, and people who used to play on the arcades. I mean, not their fault, but it's that's probably part of why arcades ended up Dude. dying out here, too, because people could finally play at home. I mean, look, people on stream, that when they watch me stream, they know how mad I get when I'm playing online. I'm like, I just, like... Like, I rage, right? And, like, I used to punch my joysticks a lot of times. I used to just be like, bring it, like that. Like, I would just get mad. Like, literally that hard. Oh, I've been there. Yeah, people would throw their pads or whatever like that. I There was one time I was just like, I'm so sick of playing fighting games on a pad. I have to buy a joystick. And we bought a joystick, like the super cheapy, like $28 joystick that okay. was like made out of whatever cheap plastic. And I yeah. was playing against my brother, and I was like, dang it, I didn't even punch it. I like slapped it on the top. That was the end of that control. Oh, no. It just didn't even work anymore. And you just did it there, and yet it's fine. Actually, dude, that, is that... Yeah, that joystick's going to be fine, dude. That joystick's going to be fine. I mean, fine. I still have my original TE from, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. Mm-hmm. So do I. So do I. And it works fine. Yeah, uh huh. Mine does too. So, except it's for the. Ah, uh, the Moss stick. Oh God! I had a moss stick. I never had a moss stick. It, I mean, it's a piece of crap. Yeah. It's it's just it's just MDF wood. Right. But it was the only thing that, that was, was out there. Was even though it wasn't great, it was better than everything. U.S. concave buttons. Yeah. Yes. But unfortunately, Mad Cat's filed anyway. for bankruptcy, and it does break my heart to know that probably the reason why it happened was because of Rock Band. Yeah. Because I bubbles. love Rock Band, you know, and it's just like they thought they could revive Rock Band with Rock Band 4. The biggest problem with it was it's just one of those games, like, even as a big fan of Rock Band as I was, like, the fact that a bunch of my DLC from the old ones, like, they, they made this giant complex process to be able to port your songs over, and they let you relicense it. And it took forever for like Rock Band Two to be relicensable, and it took like it was just this arduous process. And then, like I'm a big Red Hot Chili Peppers fan, I bought the entire Blood Sugar Sex Magic album for Rock Band on the Xbox 360. They just lost the license to it. They it wasn't portable. Uh, like that album wasn't portable. Uh, it was like one of like my favorite DLC that I bought for the game. So I could so like there was just a lot of hurdles to get over to play this game. And they, like they even tried to release that little thing so you could plug your 360 instruments to that, and that connected to the Xbox oh One. God. Yeah, like, they try to do everything they can, but it was just too much of a hurdle. And uh, the fact that it changed console generations really kind of was probably the signal that they shouldn't have tried. Yeah. And it's really unfortunate. So. It's, and not only did they try, but they went in on hardcore. Yeah. It's not like uh, they dipped their toe into that stuff. They were, yeah. they bet big. Yeah, they weren't like, let's just make 100 guitars and see what happens. They were like, good, there's like E.T. status, right? Yes, that's what I've heard, yeah. yeah. So, uh. All righty. Well, R.I.P., they leave a great legacy, not only in history, but also there are now a bunch of solid joysticks you can buy. Yeah. We're not lacking for that stuff, and it's because of them. So yeah, shout uh, because of them now, Kwamba and yeah. and Hori and all those companies know they can make that mm-hmm. and actually sell, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about this uh, uh, Akira game that's coming. Uh, Arika game, I should say. 
Um, so yeah, they released a new trailer for this EX looking game with uh, Kuroda, I mean not Kuroda, uh, Gerudo. Gerudo, Kairi, Gerudo, Kairi, Hokuto, a bunch of other characters. Yeah, a bunch of other characters. Uh, I've been playing too much Breath of the Wild. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, um, uh, like, uh, dude, and everyone thought it was an April Fool's, right? But it was so elaborate looking. I still haven't watched it because I thought it was April Fool's. But then there was a stream. They literally had a stream. And Kazunoko was there and he was physically playing this game. Was he? (laughs) <laughs> yeah exactly but um know. he uh but it was it's 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 basically a tech demo uh-huh they're just putting together a tech demo because i think what they wanted to do was get people to actually try to see if they're interested if there's enough interest and hype and now they're asking the fgc like a bunch of people are like spread the word get the get the impressions out there like let's get talk about it so we can get a kickstarter started right do you want to get the impressions out there uh Sure. Hey, Arika's trying to make a game. I mean by showing the video. Oh, sure. Okay. I still Uh, haven't seen it. uh, Dude, what is wrong? My computer is seriously, like, maxing out right now. Oh, no. It's hard to, like... Yeah, you can see. It's just, like... It's it, Chrome right now is being oh, a wow. resource hog right see. now. Yeah, it's it's really what just butt. Chrome right now. That's just, like, oh, my God. Freaking out. Jeez, what the hell is going on? Yeah, you ain't kidding. I mean, like, I, I should quit Chrome right now and come back into it. It'll be faster than what I'm trying to do here, so. But it's the XSplit update? Because I did just update my XSplit, like, this morning or yesterday. JROCK BNR, is that actually true? Is that actually true? Uh, Max was having the same problem yesterday. Oh, yeah? Oh, well, there you go. It's not actually my fault. Okay. That said, if you click on that link that uh, was just put in there by Mechshen, yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. Just you can there. actually just check it out there. So uh, let's see if I can do that. Yeah, copy it. Yeah, there you uh, go. Let's just I do like this it. instead. Yes. Paste and go. All right. Yeah, YouTube. Do let's it. suppose that you're writing a really important email to a Ooh, colleague. Ooh, Grammarly. <laughs> I've seen that ad too many times. You've <laughs> actually <laughs> seen this ad? Dude, friends will see. you knew exactly what it was. I was like, what the heck? How did you know what this your- is? Uh, let's see here. Uh, let me take it out of. Let's go to default view so you can fit it all on. Yeah, the I watch too much YouTube. I mean, I don't have cable television. I'm not living in the past. I, I'm in the future where I have the YouTubes and Netflix and Hulu. Right. All right. Well, uh, let me turn on the, the speaker so you can hear anyway. it at least. Just so you can hear it. Let I've been see. watching a lot of lectures on World War One lately on YouTube. There you go. Okay. It looks classic familiar. music. Yeah. Wow, that is KI levels of particles. Dang, okay. particles. Look at those fists and particles. <laughs> wow, he is just. There's flames of particles on him. She's made out of particles. That looks a little janky, but. That looks a little weird. Full sidestep, baby! Okay. I don't like that fireball. I liked his other fireball better. But do you like how the meter system or whatever it is looks like the Evo logo? Oh, yeah, it does. Alright, yeah. This looks like it could be real. We're only halfway through this thing. ICPU use is detected. But see, this was the interesting part there. You notice how they're fighting on a bridge and it's like turning and they're like get stuck in the skinny yeah. passage and they can do the long, long side too. What's interesting is the original EX had infinite stages. Like they had corners, but not really corners. But like the stages were just basically like there was no environment around, right? yeah. yeah there was no real environment but yeah. this one actually has like an environment and like the bridge like i said they would get stuck on the skinny axis That's and cool. stuff like that so look looks like some really interesting stuff so yeah, all right all right 
I mean, I would, would be great if it was a thing was that they made. I'm... Too Old, Too Furious just sure. happened. I, yeah, yeah, I yeah, forgot yeah. to talk about the results of that, but mm. they had an EX2 tournament there. Yeah, and yeah. that game always looks like, every time I watch people play it, I'm like, damn, I really want to play this. <laughs> like, it just looks fun. It, looks, it does look fun. Although yeah. I don't have all those ridiculous uh, Excel combos that oh, a lot yeah, of people have. Out. Like, with the, with like the bo- Sonic Boom, they bounce up with Excel, jump, yeah. Bah, bah, yeah. Bah, 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 Sonic Boom, bah, jump, Excel, bah, sure. bah, bah, you know, like, stuff like that, so. But, yeah, um, no, I mean, it looks really interesting, and, and, and like I said, people are trying to spread awareness of it. A lot of people are just trying to get Maximilian to talk about it. Which is a great idea. That is a good idea. Uh, but you know, he probably has already. Probably. Um, but you know, I think that would be really, really cool. I would be all about that. Yeah. Love, no, to, love to try it out. Literally, Excel combos. It would. They're like spreadsheet combos, dude. It's like some parentheses <laughs> A one colon A seven. You know, oh boy. They really were called Excel combos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They were. Um, Turns out that's a real word. <laughs> <laughs> Turns uh, out. Uh, let's see here. That was actually makes me think of the time that, like, I always thought it was just, like, I think it was when I was talking to you about it, my friend was like, man, Nintendo messed up. They should have totally called those little figures Amigos. Oh. Right? Instead of Amiibos. And I said that to you, and you're, like, harder to copyright. It was like... Yeah, that's true. Oh, and that was it. Like, yeah, you, it's not, you can't trademark something as easily like that. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, rights, rights. Uh, other things, a bunch of signings, Nasser Esports, mm. uh, N-A-S-R, uh, as a group, and they are expanding into their fighting game division by adding, uh, Syed Tekken Master Hashem yeah. to the team, and they also just recently signed Adil uh, Big Bird Anush to the team mm-hmm. as well. So, uh, they have expanded their roster by picking up a couple of players. Circa Esports has also picked up a Mortal Kombat slash Injustice competitor. Forever King mm-hmm. has been signed. Christian, I guess, uh, Quiles is his last name? Yeah. Christian Quiles. So that's really cool. Really yeah, cool. man. Um, I don't know much about Nasser, but uh, uh, I wonder if they're specifically trying to get players who are Middle Eastern, because that's... Ooh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, you're right. I, mean, huh? I think that'd be awesome because Big Bird is—he just got second place at uh, that CPT thing. He's mm-hmm, a mm-hmm. fantastic player. Yeah. Tekken Master got second place at Evo in Mortal Kombat, even though the scene for MK in his area is not big. So right. obviously, very talented. Uh, it'd be awesome if they could both travel more often. Right. Okay. Um, also, uh, going back kind of to the uh, Street Fighter EX thing, the 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 Arika game. Another guy is. Just trying to gauge interest on putting his hat back in the ring. It's the original producer of Eternal Champions on the Sega Genesis. Do you even know what that is? I don't think so. Dude, it was basically Genesis's version of trying to make like this fighting game. And of course, I hated the game because I was a Nintendo oh, guy back team then. Nintendo. And my friends were Team Sega, so all they did was keep talking about Eternal Champions and how great that game was and everything like that. But it was one of those games that was you could tell was completely made by the U.S. kind of market because they were obsessed with inside jokes. There's like fatalities and like stage deaths and all this. But then there was like a chicken that you could play. You could play as a chicken and one of its special moves is a farmer would come in with an axe and chop its head off and it would spray blood on you and do damage. One of the secret characters was a senator, I think. That was this like guy in a suit. I don't even remember what he did and everything like that. But it was like... The crazy, what? like it was just such a weird game. But, right, I got this on uh, Wikipedia now. But but it was one of those games where like the people who liked it were like, oh, this is the funniest thing. Look how witty this is and how All great right. and stuff. And it was just Control like left chicken. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, I don't see this. Uh, what do we got here? We got the characters on. Oh, they actually don't list the characters. Yeah, seems... but uh, that game was. Um... <laughs> people are saying they actually remember the senator. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, no, the game is pretty, pretty crazy. So, uh... No, you know what? I was definitely also on Team Nintendo at the time, and so I would not have had this game. Okay, okay, there you go. Um, but yeah, uh, the producer of it put out a tweet and was like, huh, how interested would people be in a new Eternal Champions game? And I was just like, for me, like... I could probably go back and more realistically evaluate it now without thinking the game was just complete ass because yeah. like I was so anti-Sega at the time. So. <laughs> oh, uh, let's see. 
I'm not. I, I now. Now I'm gonna Google Eternal Champions Chicken. Go for it. Let's see you here. Secret characters. Yep. Oh, it's 15 minutes long. I don't oh, know. Oh, they know. probably have all the characters in there, and you have to find. Yeah, you have to find the chicken anyway. Any case, um, uh, other news is that uh, I always like to talk about this guy's content. Gerald Lee put out a new video, part of Korea Gaming, uh, which I have to say it that nice way because it's kind of how he kind of says it in his videos too. I notice now, because Core A Gaming apparently is a pun on Korea. But Core A Gaming has come out with a new uh, video, and it's about kind of the mental psychology of fighting games and how taunts and teabagging and getting into other your opponent's head like uh, affects everything. Are you still looking up the chicken? No, here? I found it. You found the chicken? Okay, okay, yeah. But uh, really, really cool stuff. Really good stuff. Uh, that's awesome. It's a great video. Again, his content is always really good, very insightful. Yeah. But the other thing that's really good about the content that he always does is he always prevents this, presents the information, talks about it, then at the end lets you draw your own conclusions. Like he doesn't try to force the conclusions I at you. That. At the end, he's always like, "What do you guys think?" You know, kind of an inter you know, kind of a way to do that. But he's always like, "This is how it works. This is how I feel. This all goes, and everything like that." But it's not like definitive, and he always like gathers people's opinions about that so so crispy a chicken who died in 1967 a.d he vowed he would never become part of the dinner table without a fight he practiced egg foo an ancient barnyard martial art he was killed while attempting to rescue some other chickens capital chickens some other chickens from becoming someone else's dinner clearly this character is a joke but his size and attacking style make him somewhat more formidable than some of the other animal characters he shares the same stage with both playable versions of the Eternal, the Dark Champion, and Blast. Uh, there you go. Do they have the senator on there? Slither, a pet snake of the owner of a bar from the Old West of 1820 AD called the Snake Bite. Uh, let's see. Hooter, this owl is the familiar of Thanatos' human form, Vespian. <laughs> Zuni, a Hooter? circus performer monkey from 1902 AD. Senator, there he is. What do you see? Oh, he's just called Senator. Yeah. Senator, a politician from Washington, D.C. in the year 1995 A.D. that practiced the martial art of dishonesty. That's right, because this was making fun of the time that uh, all the politicians were getting mad at Mortal Kombat. That's why they put him in this oh. game. That's right. He was the poke fun at them. The Senator made a living by voting the ways of special interest groups and creating issues to make himself popular. He was surprised when he wasn't supported by his party for re-election. He once voted for a human's right, human rights issue, and his party was angry that humanity was considered above their personal profits. When he lost in a landslide election after losing millions of his own money, he died of a massive heart attack. All the characters are dead in this game, I guess? I guess, guess yeah. Uh, his character's sprites are actually edited Larson Tyler sprites. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. Oh, it's another character in the game. Oh, okay, okay. There you anyway. Go. Yeah. Genius. This was Eternal champion. So needless to say, when I saw that they were like interest of that, I was like, I won't be retweeting that. <laughs> yeah. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. <laughs> uh, also, um, uh, there's a Burst League circuit announced to support King of Fighters 14, Guilty Gear Exert, and Blaze Blue communities. Oh, interesting. I believe this was uh, created by Bear UNLV. Yeah, Bear UNLV oh, is nice. this. And remember, he's part of the Curly circuit as well. So he's, I guess he's doing a lot of work trying to build up a lot of these sub-community Yeah, games, yeah, he does really. a lot of stuff. So he's created a Burst League with a system ranking and rewarding top players across all three of those games. The point leader in each of these three games after East Coast Throwdown will be given a free trip with housing to CE Otaku 2017. Alrighty. So there you go. So Very cool. Shout outs once again to Bear UNLV for all the hard work that he has been doing. So he's Alrighty. doing a lot of great stuff. Again, that's for King of Fighters 14, Guilty Gear Exerd, and Blaze Blue. All games that will definitely be at CE Otaku. CE Otaku. Yep. And that's all I have. Alrighty. That's what I got. Well, folks wanted me to talk about the... Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Persona 5 thing. I only read a brief spiel about it. Brief spiel about it. 
A beef spreel. A beef spreel. <laughs> that actually sounds just, really good right now. It sounds like some Jewish food, I'm doesn't hungry it? I'm right now, dude. <laughs> go, I'm going to go order go myself to, some Go to Cantor's, <laughs> head over to Goldberg's and get a beef spreel. Can I get some beef spreel, please? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds totally real, actually. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, I only read a small thing about it. Okay, okay. If you don't know, spiel is a short, it's a Yiddish sl- slang word that just means like a retelling oh interesting like okay a, okay a, talking about something <laughs> uh, tell shekels for a beef spree <laughs> hello canters i got your newest delicacy right here <laughs> anyways continue, continue. <laughs> uh anyway so uh apparently uh uh atlas and the way that they phrased it was that their japanese masters don't want them well they want the players to know that it would be risky or dangerous or something, some phrasing like that, don't mm-hmm. do it. Um, don't stream it. To basically. stream after oh. a certain point in the game. Mm. So apparently the game, I've never played Persona, but apparently it's like uh, based on a school year or whatever. Right. Uh-huh. And they'd say don't stream past July 7th in the game. Interesting. Like a third of the way through the game, people think. Uh, so anyway... You know, uh, they definitely have the right to do that. Hmm. You know, they have, I mean, presumably, I don't know this, but presumably they have the rights. Uh, It would be very strange Uh, if they uh. didn't. Um, The rights meaning the exclusive rights to control uh, who gets to uh, uh, make copies of, distribute, you know, uh, make modifications to, or or show in public, perform in public or display in public uh, the game and the audiovisual work. That is to say, it's graphics and the sounds. Um, that's that's all things that they have the rights to. So they can definitely shut down people who they don't want doing it. Yeah, I remember at one point in time, I was trying to stream Guilty Gear stuff. And I actually got a warning from, like, uh, Axis, I think it was. Or there, or Axis, they're like, don't, like, stream story mode ever. Really? And they're like, don't ever stream, like like too far into like trials or something like that really it was weird it was really interesting yeah but nothing ever came of that yeah it's it, I, one thing i want to say is how does anybody say p5 looks awful that game looks amazing like the the style the graphics oh, the graphics it's it so cool. beautiful yeah. yeah but anyways come with continue. you um anyway yeah that's about it i mean they have all the rights there so sorry you can't unless if they don't want you to if, if they give you an explicit written license saying that you can do it, then you can do it. Right. But they haven't done that. <laughs> Someone said that Juyuna's already streamed far past 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, you know. But you know what? He's a, he's whatever, a risk taker. Yeah, whatever Juyuna wants, Juyuna does, dude. He's a, he will he, take he, the risks. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so people ask me on Twitter whether players may have any other rights. Like, is it fair use to stream a game? Probably not. Probably not. Right, yeah. Fair use is is something that everybody wants to look at and say, my thing is fair it's fair use. It's it's we all want it to be bigger than it is, but it's actually quite small in effect. It's not something that you can commonly use. It's very rare actually. So um, don't don't depend on that, that's for sure. There are maybe some other tiny ways in which you can get rights. Like if you say you play Persona 5 for five years on stream and people at Atlas know about it Mm -hmm. and they are aware of it and they let you do it and they know that you're making money off of it and it's your job and they don't stop you. But then five years later, they're like, you can't do it anymore. Maybe then you have the argument that you can Uh, keep it up. Okay, got it. But outside of rare things like that and barring some change in the law, you know. You know, I was just thinking about that. You know how Twitch lets you sell games now? I wonder if they kind of did that also to make it so companies are more excited to let people stream their oh, game. Oh, I'm sure. I'm because sure. it's like an advertisement, I'm right? Sure they so did. that gives them more incentive for that. And I just thought about that. I should set that up, so I should be selling some Breath of the Wild on my stream. You street. should be, man. I should be selling some Breath of the Wild. Because people are always With like, Boba. this game looks fun. I want to play this. And I should be like, well, if you want to buy it, here's a link. Yeah, why don't you, you know? do that? I, just, I forgot it existed. Yeah. I completely forgot it existed. Boba. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, Twitch, well, not exactly sell games, but it's like uh, something like if you were the one who somebody 
saw playing a game and they liked you playing it and then they bought it, then like you get credit or yeah, something. Yeah, you you basically it's just a referral link kind of thing. You know what I mean? Referral I think it's link. like that. I think it's basically like that. So got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Amazon. I think it's an interesting idea. Mark Wolf says uh, Amazon owns Twitch and they want to compete with Steam. Oh. Yeah, I mean they got Amazon Games. It's true. Mm-hmm. It's true. Twitch, yeah, and Twitch has a client. A, uh, an, an app you know the curse client uh, I don't know if you're, well it's on PC I don't know if you've been to these things but um, the curse client is a way to there's, there's servers in there it's an it's a program all right mm-hmm. you can you can create like a discord like server okay. right but you can also use it to put add-ons onto your games and whatnot it's got all these sorts of features now it's the twitch app because uh, they bought curse okay 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 hmm yeah yeah, anyway, nope, legally you are screwed. Yeah, anyways, I'm just like thinking. I, uh, I did have a couple clients who been uh, have been, without getting too deep into this thing, um, I, I had some clients who, who were content creators who were asked by the company whose games they were making content for and with to stop doing what they were doing. Oh, uh, that sucks. And I made that argument that I just said. Hey, you knew my dude's been doing it for five years. Leave us alone. <laughs> and then they did. But that said, that um, said hire this man. Uh, yeah. If you, yeah. <laughs> uh, at some point, I imagine that there will be a big legal brawl because it's being a streamer is resulting in more money. At some point, assuming things continue the way that they have, it might be, you know, really valuable. Right. So if if some company wants to blow you up. There might be enough money in it to have a big all, all out brawl in terms of legal stuff, which would be very expensive okay. and long time, hundreds of thousands of dollars, yada yada. Okay. But that might be a way to change the law. It's the only chance, because it's it sure is not going to be uh, the Congress. Hmm. I can tell you that. Okay. Unless we make the argument to them that it would be beneficial to a small few and terrible for the rest of us, then maybe they maybe they agree to it. <laughs> Oh, man. I was just talking with a buddy. <laughs> you know him, too, but I'm not going to say who it is. Uh, maybe he's watching right now. Uh, apparently, his industry that he worked in was the mortgage industry, and his big company he worked for, his employer, the lead guy, was like wow. a Trump supporter. And when uh, Trump got in office, one of the things that they signed was this, uh, I don't know if you heard about this, a little bit of a reform of how the mortgage industry works such such that now they're not obligated to provide like the best impartial advice they can try to make some money off of you mm, th- themselves right okay and basically that just resulted in loss of confidence in the industry not more money for them loss of confidence in them so fewer people are doing it uh-huh. so now my friend's laid off because his job died <laughs> So it kind of, kind of, Damn, back, dude. Oh kind of backfired God. on old boy over oh there. Oh, my God. Okay, okay, okay. Anyway, I think that's about it. Uh, anything else to talk about? Uh, Katy Perry just put in a link from Hell Pockets that apparently the uh, King of Fighters 14, all four new DLC characters can be purchased individually, but you can take advantage of an all-including bundle for a discounted price. Oh, Okay, let's see for new characters fight the way to your heart. There you go. So they're offering a new thing there and there. So good stuff. <laughs> stuff to help pockets. Yeah, okay. definitely. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, that's all I got. All right, that's man. That's all I got. So. Well, I guess I got a skedaddle. I got yes. a date with a chicken spreel. <laughs> Back at chicken spreel? Yeah, dude, it's pork? not just beef. I mean, come on. Chicken spreels. But what? But what is, no, there's no pork spreel. Is your date with the, the razor tomorrow? Uh, yeah, it's tomorrow night. Okay. Sad, sad face, because yeah. I can never achieve that, dude. That is something I will never be do you able want, to Do you achieve. want some of these? No, it's okay. It's Look at okay. this. I think I got it to about an inch now. It's cool. Dang, uh, that's crazy. We did talk about K. Brad Wolf versus Wolf Crown. You're going to have to watch the archives for that. Ha-ha! Uh, when's my politics stream? So what happened was I tried to stream from a computer that I have been slowly upgrading, but it still has an i3, and I haven't gotten the i7 yet to upgrade it so that it could actually do things. Mm-hmm. Um, I should probably do that soon, but that's the only issue. Okay, cool. Alrighty. Well, 
keep a lookout on twitch.tv slash ultra david you know it starts and then of course i've been streaming days and nights a lot recently i finally got my internet fixed so i won't be streaming online matches with horrendous lag on wi-fi all day so that was not going very well. Like every time the match was lagging, I'm like, this is my fault. I'm sorry. This is my <laughs> fault. But uh, that's taken care of now. So everything should be back to normal. But I've also been streaming Breath of the Wild like almost every night. So go ahead and tune into that. I've been uh, voice acting all the dialogue in there. Wow. And everything. So, and it's been super entertaining. Just no spoilers, please. No okay, spoilers. sick. Dude, even one character is this bird man named Cass who's like a bard. And like he, he sang a song, like this whole story, like yeah. this backstory, and like you I sung made it, huh? up a song like, on the spot for the whole That's thing. That's rad, man. So, yeah. I have not seen Power Rangers, probably not gonna do it. However, Estwild, I have definitely listened to Dan Carlin's Hardcore History podcast on World War One for sure, a couple of times. Mm. Highly recommend it if anybody's into history at all. Or even not into just history, because it's just good storytelling. So if you like stories that happen to be about real life, I highly recommend Dan Carlin uh, on <laughs> history. Yeah. And I always joke, too, that my, my handle always sounded like a Power Rangers thing, right? We need power of the Chenzord now! You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it always sounded Chenzord. Like, yeah, the Chenzord, so... Gross. Oh. But I haven't seen the movie either, so. All right, case, that's uh, for kids. Yeah, but See definitely follow twitch.tv slash jchenzor. That's where I'm streaming a lot of stuff up. Sejam has been streaming every morning at twitch.tv slash sejam when he's not at E-League. Ah. Tasty Steve has been streaming on twitch.tv slash tasty underscore Steve. Uh, he hasn't been streaming as much because they've both been busy with E-League. So, yeah. okay. I will see you guys later. Later. Peace out, everybody. Beef spreels. Beef. Mm, God, I'm hungry now. I need to go get some. Food. I imagine that they have like some flaky outer crust. Dude, that sounds amazing. Yeah. It's almost like a beef paella or something like that. Or... Yeah, I was thinking more like, uh, like a knish, but like a little bit flakier. Okay. 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 You know? I'm down with that. I'm down with the beef spreel. I'm down with the beef spreel. <laughs>